Hey, at Celebrate Truth Radio, where we expose the world's lies and celebrate the truth every Saturday on Revolution Radio. I'm your host, Robbie Davidson, joined with my co-host, Pastor Nate Wolf, sitting in a parking lot near Walmart. How's it going, Pastor Nate? <laughs> hey, it's going well, man. I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The relatives have been kind to me. I've, uh, I've enjoyed some great food. And of course, great Wisconsin cheese. You know, you've got to have good cheese when you're in Wisconsin. But anyway, I am sitting in the Walmart parking lot with full bars. So I ho I'm hoping I won't get dropped from the call tonight. <laughs> it's great. It's like a role reversal. This time you get to actually be in your car. Right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. We do all sorts of type of shows on uh, Celebrate Truth Radio. Do them in uh, the future. We do them in vehicles. <laughs> and I don't know. Maybe we've got to do some trains, planes and automobiles, you know, like we'll yeah, just add the whole go. thing to it if we can do it. Some uh, some flights actually do have Wi-Fi, so that would be quite something, eh, to be able to do the show <laughs> on a flight. So maybe we'll True. do that in the, in the new year. We'll see. But uh, how is everything going with you? It's going great. Uh, family is good. Uh, and, you know, summer is in full swing, so it's a little crazy at my house with uh, – two young adults and two high schoolers still living at home so you know we we got in it we picked up an extra car this week my son got a used car this week he had been you know hoping to get and so that's solving some of our logistical problems when you have you know four people working full-time and only three cars in the house that's an issue but so it's all good now man we're just looking forward to the summer and and uh, a couple of years i'll have all my kids graduated from high school so that'll be an interesting phase I'm actually enjoying this uh, little uh, hiatus right now from all the conferences. Uh, yeah. Been uh, on tour and doing a lot of the conferences. And then obviously with the big announcement this week with Owen Benjamin, I've been really busy fielding a lot of different calls and inquiries on that. But uh, it's yeah. going to be an exciting time here uh, at the tail end of uh, 2019. Got a few more conferences coming up. We're going to be talking about that uh, today on the show, as well as Take on the World, uh, Flat Earth International Conference, and a lot of others. But also, I wanted to mention that if you're not uh, able to join us at the uh, Flat Earth International Conference in Dallas, then we do have the live stream option available. You can check out all the information at fe2019.com. And speaking of conferences, we've got someone tonight, a very special guest, the the legend, the the man himself that really, I mean, was one of the big names that uh, started this all off here in modern day um, with his extraordinary uh, work, uh, Flat Earth Clues. Uh, maybe he was meaning just to get some uh, discussion going, maybe see if someone could you know, bring this down. But if anything, it did the opposite. It exploded. More and more people started resonating with uh, what Mark Sargent was able to bring with Flat Earth Clues. Mark, are you there? I am here, guys, and thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Are you available? Wait, I'm here, right? There you go. You're here. Oh, you Excellent. couldn't hear me the first time? I couldn't hear you the first time. Well, that's no. weird. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I thought maybe you were being censored. No, 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 no. <laughs> and and I was looking at my mute my mute button. I'm going, wait, did I make a rookie mistake there? Hopefully not. But anyway, how are you guys? 19, we're doing good. <laughs> did we lose Robbie? Yeah, I think we Robbie. lost Robbie for a second. There. Oh, are, you are, we, are we losing each other? Well, I, I'm going to close down everything on my side just to make sure it's not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, we, we lost you for a second. And oh, I think okay. when I, I think when I first came on, Nate could hear me, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I could hear you. I heard your intro, Mark. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, that must be that must be on my side. No so worries. No we'll worries. We'll check it out. Anyways, tell uh, <laughs> tell the people a little bit about yourself if they're not familiar with who you are. All right. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't know who I am. Um, my name is Mark Sargent. I am the freshman recruiter for a metaphorical university called Flat Earth which means I am a flat earth believer. I do not think for one second that we live on this tiny little rock that's uh, covered with water and covered with a little bit of wispy smoke that's flying through an impossibly huge universe at five different velocities in five different directions. Uh, I think we instead are living in a building, a very, very large building with walls and a floor and a ceiling similar to a terrarium, a planetarium, a snow globe, whatever you want to call it. And that we aren't some insignificant little speck uh, in, in the galaxy. I think we were deliberately put here. And that this whole place has meaning. And it's just, you know, if it was built, there's a creator. And that means that uh, wherever you are in your spiritual life, you should probably reevaluate it at this point. 
So now, when you put to, when you put together Flat Earth Clues, I, I know you put together a few of them at first, but what what was your thinking when you put together the very first one, Flat Earth Clues number one? Oh, desperation. <laughs> More yeah. than anything, uh, I was no, no, because remember I had been. I, I'm sorry, I, I probably should have put this in the intro. I first looked into flat Earth, you know, in the summer of 2014, and thought it was ridiculous. I, I mean, I wasn't shy about telling people, like everybody. Well, I shouldn't say everybody. There's a few people that don't think it's ridiculous right off the bat, but most people do. And I had tried to hammer that thing away for nine months, and so just out of sheer desperation, it's like you know what. I can't, I can't solve this anymore by myself. There's, there's no way. And I considered myself a very clever problem solver. So I, I made my first video, which was, you know, the Flat Earth Clues introduction, which was just basically a summary of, of what I thought the, the world was. And I put it out to the internet and said, okay, here's where I think I am on this. Show me where I went wrong. You know, here's my theory, you know, like anything, like like a thesis and a PhD thing. Tell me, tell me more where I'm wrong. And honestly, though, and, and you guys can appreciate this more than most, the moment that I had when I woke up on, on February 10th in, in 2015 and heard the entire clues in my voice and got up at three o'clock in the morning and, and was taking a shower and I could hear the whole thing just sitting there. It was like, okay, this is the, what's the next paragraph's going to be. And this is what the next, next paragraph's going to be. And I sat down and it was probably some of the clearest writing, if not the clearest writing I've ever had in my life to wow. where when I was done, it was like, well, I couldn't stop there. I was like, okay. You know, it was like the Forrest Gump thing where he's running back and forth across the country, which doesn't make <laughs> me, doesn't make me sound very smart, but, but that was it. It's like, well, I wrote it. I might as well narrate it. And so I got a, a, a microphone and a little headset mic and, and just a $20 USB headset and recorded, you know, my, the narrative over it and made sure, you know, that I, I did, that I, I didn't make any errors. So if I made any errors while reading it, for the most part, I, I deleted it, but I didn't have that many. And then when I was done with that, it's like, well, might as well add some visuals. And then I added the visuals. It took me all day to do this. And then when I was done with the first one, I, you know, went to bed exhausted and then got up early the next day and, and started over. And I made the first uh, seven clues in eight days. And, wow. and that's how, yeah. And, but yeah, that's, sorry, the short answer to what you were asking, desperation. I really wanted an answer to this and I, I couldn't do it by myself. And so I just asked the, the internet for help. And um, yeah, that, that was probably a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> in the long run because they came back at me and, and instead of yelling at me and condemning me I mean yeah and some people did that of course but they didn't do it to my face um, the only people that contacted me directly were the people with positive or inquisitive uh, con you know reach outs which was you know tell me more or you know the media tell me more or a subject matter experts a lot of them in 2015 and 16 said you know what you might be on to something as crazy as it sounds so yeah, there you go. Sorry, I ramble. That's what I do. Cool. <laughs> uh oh, we lost Robbie again, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> okay, this is where I, I take over. You. Robbie, yeah. are you there? Hello, Canada. <laughs> Canada, can you what, read me? Yeah, what's going on in Canada today? I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. And officially, well, I don't think it's Canada. I think it's Canadia. And I yeah. said this. I said this up at the Calgary <laughs> conference, which was. Uh, and I'm recording on my side in case his recording just goes uh, okay, belly up, um, <laughs> which was, uh, I'd heard this a couple times. I thought it was pretty good, which was, well, you know, it's America, you know, American. So mm -hmm. if you're Canadian, you're from Canada. There you go. Seems yeah. pretty That's... easy to me. So why makes are you calling it Canada? That, that makes a lot of sense. I don't yeah, know. For sure. You know, the, I mean, the, the, the vowels are all wrong. And so, <laughs> yeah, so I worked that into my Q&A sessions when I was up there at Calgary. And, <laughs> and just this, the snickers I got from, from the Canadians, they just thought it was the greatest thing. Nice. Now, because now, when you went to, when you went to Calgary, was that the first time you'd been to Canada, or you been there many no, times? No, no, no. As well, a matter of there, fact, you, you were you were there just last year too. So. I was there last year with Robbie. Well, okay, so okay, a couple things. Uh, first, I was up in because I live in the northwest of the United States, northwest corner. Yeah. You got to remember, Vancouver's right up the road from here. In fact, I went to uh, Bellingham. I went to Western Washington University, which is located. On the it's the further it's the furthest northern major university in, in the state and it's only oh, wow. I 
I think it's maybe 10 miles from the border. So uh, what happened there was, uh, you know, we, you know, and of course people could go across the border and, and go to bars and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but when I, in fact, the landlord of the, the house we were renting was from Vancouver, British Columbia. So Canada wasn't a big thing. Although I, most of the time when I went to Canada, it was before nine 11. And so that was when, you know, you could just drive across. <laughs> you didn't yeah. need a passport. It was like, you know, they just kind of waved you through. They didn't care. <laughs> And then um, years went by and I didn't go up there again. And then uh, the, the documentary Behind the Curve came out uh, and it premiered at the Toronto Film Festival. Ooh. So I got to do So I'd never been to Toronto before. So I flew up there uh, with Patricia Steer and we did the Toronto Film Festival, which was a lot of fun. And came back and said, well, I'll probably never do Canada again. And then <laughs> Robbie calls me. And he nice. says, oh, yeah, let's do a conference up in... Wait, that was Edmonton, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, Edmonton, Alberta. Yeah. Hey, there he is. There Ooh. he is. <laughs> you back? I'm back. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. So, but, oh, by the way, you're a little quiet, just so you know. Um, yeah. And then uh, we, we did that conference, and then we drove from the, uh, the conference to Calgary, where we rented a big Airbnb and most of the speakers were there. And so we get to spend a few days, uh, you know, uh, Jaron and wait, Jaron was crap. Bob, Cammy, Jaron wasn't there. Wait, Jaron was there, right? And we lost Robbie again. Okay. Yeah, I so saw I, some, I saw some video clips, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm Steve, sorry. I don't Steve I, was there. And, yeah, yeah. Rob, Rob Skiba. Jeez, my memory. Sorry. Uh, Rob Skiba, <laughs> Bob, Cammy, his wife, his son, um, Patricia Steer, Rick Hummer, Robbie, Matt Long, and I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that I, I feel bad if I left so many out. Yeah, wasn't that wasn't that Matt's uh, first uh, major speaking? I think it was my yeah. friend, the first major. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was really good, and it was and it was. Um, uh, had a lot of fun at it, at it. and um, uh, so that was the second time. And so when we did the uh, conference down in Los Angeles, just re you know we've done three so far. Mm -hmm. uh, we went, we did that. Um, one of the one of the people there, Sarah Stewart from uh, from Canada, uh, and her friend <laughs> were there in the audience, and she didn't even hesitate. You know, lots of people, it's, you know, that you hear this, it's like, oh, we should do a conference, you know it's like yeah. like any producer it's like pff, come on you're never gonna follow through because most people don't and she did i mean the second she got back she's like oh yeah we're gonna do one in calgary uh and that was awesome and so yeah she's a go-getter man. yeah she is a go-getter and so i pff, i'll be darned here i go fly back to you know which is weird because i flew out of calgary airport to get to seattle and it's really really quick it's actually it's it's barely an hour out of wow. seattle it people don't realize how close it is and then we, uh, so I, w I went up to Calgary and, and did the conference with Robbie and Matt and uh, all the other great people. And th it was just awesome. I, you know, I think more, most of the speakers, I think the majority of the speakers were American, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah. and so it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really professionally done, uh, you know, uh, real, real basic bare bones, you know, just get it done and the the turnout was better than expected and i had a i had a great time just just enjoyed myself and uh the weather wasn't awesome but i hear that about <laughs> alberta a lot which is you know, yes. i think i think everyone's confirmed to uh you know come back for 2020 but mark i think we're still you know waiting to hear from uh your agent correct oh well yes i mean well okay <laughs> first off just even to get my agent you have to go through my assistant um, sure. And my assistant's number is unlisted <laughs> on top of it. Uh, I mean, it's really, nice. you know, like a, a really a velvet rope scenario. So I don't blame anybody if you can't get a hold of I had to go through like five people. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a layered approach. It is. It is. It's and, you know, a layered approach. In fact, like o Owen Benjamin tried to call um, the other day and I, they just wouldn't let him through. So no, yeah. no, lots of lots of screening, lots of yeah, lots of know, screening. <laughs> gatekeepers, right? That's what they're called. They're called yes, gatekeepers. Yes. I remember dealing in uh, in sales and stuff. You'd always have to get through the gatekeepers to get to the big, 
the big decision makers, you know, companies you, and that sort of thing. So, you know, the, usually do. the funny thing is, even though it's a bad term in the conspiracy world, as sure. far as the phone calls go, I have become one of the gatekeepers because <laughs> because my phone number's out there a lot and people call me and say, hey, who do you have in this area? Or we're thinking of doing this. Who do you, you know, who do you recommend? And I'm, I'm always shuffling little things you know now whether you, you have know, to get the uh, rolodex out right well no i i've got a, most of them committed to, to memory at this point <laughs> it's like okay well, you, you know this part of the or or if i don't know i tell them i go look if i if i don't know i can find out and so yeah. like i'll i'll put feelers out every once in a while it's like do we know anybody in x city <laughs> or so or, how quick i got a question i got a question let's go back to flatter clues here for a second yeah how quick was the first call because talking to rick hummer and, and other people you know that i've been uh, you know in this community since 2015 a lot of them you know just reached out you picked up the phone and, and you talked but mm -hmm. my question is when was the first call to come in after you put out flatter clues how how many hours how many days it was one week and it was one week. Okay. It was one week. And I know this because the the first call was from Matt Boylan. Oh, wow. Okay. He oh, was, I, I will say this, as fruit loopy as he is sometimes, he has really good instincts on some stuff. And okay. he, in fact, it, I, I, I probably, I've told this story before, whereas he called me before the clues were even done. So, like, I remember, because I cranked out the first ones really, really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And he called me on clue eight by the time, okay. but like the day I put out clue eight, he called me and he pretended to be, I was writing about this recently and he pretended to be like a guy from the, an education system. He wanted to interview me about such and such. And, <laughs> and he was trying to feel me out to see if I was a real guy, you know? And, and he goes, Hey, he goes, why aren't you call? Why aren't you answering my texts? I've been t texting you since clue two. <laughs> oh yeah. And this I go, and I go, um, because I, I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> so <laughs> where, you know, uh, pe people don't realize if you text somebody and they have a landline, it just dies. The, the no, but even worse, even worse than that, Mark, if you text someone and it goes to their landline, usually there's a service that actually costs you money because there's like, there's different landline services that will trans transcribe your text Yeah, and you never Whoa. get them, but there, there usually is a fee for that. So you might've cost a lot of money texting <laughs> oh, your wow. landline. <laughs> so so yeah he was he was the very first one and of wow. course it was really flattering for me because you know there weren't a lot of people to to research on flatter sure. and i, and I sure. i had seen the only stuff i had seen was his early work and that interview that he did on the couch when he was up in montreal sure. uh when he when he told the story i was just mesmerized by it i mean i'm, I'm listening to this thing i'm going this is a freaking movie of the week you know, this is a great, it's a great little Twilight Zone episode. I don't believe it quite yet, but there's something yeah. about it that really is like, oh man, it's a cool little story. And um, and then and you know, I I and I didn't know how to get a hold of him. And then it turns out he calls me, and you know, the rest of it. You know, there, there there was some irony there where I was one of the only people with his phone number. And mm. the media, I was, I was the gatekeeper. I, that was my first gatekeeping duty, which was media would call me trying to set up interviews with Matt, and I would turn them down. <laughs> I would turn them down. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He I think would, you've he, mentioned that before. So how long, how long was it for you then? Because obviously you're putting out the clues, and you're like, look, this is desperation. I just want to know, you know, where did I go wrong? Of course, this is wrong. Right. When did you actually become a flat earther, like 110 percent? Where you just knew you're like 100 percent. We're not on a spinning ball flying through space. When was that for you? That was probably in the summer when the first subject matter experts started calling me. I, well, I mean, the first one, the first guy, honestly, was such, was so great. And that was Sean McCrary from the United States Navy, the, uh, the, uh. the, the Sparrow Missile Instructor. He was, he was so awesome. And he was laying out, this is when, you know, Jonathan was my, my co-host. Yeah. And he was laying stuff out that was so mind blown you know it reinforced everything we we had heard and and gave us more information that we weren't even looking at you know how how that you know they were shooting they were targeting ships at, at 50 nautical miles you know ship to ship you know point to point with a two degree beam radar and he goes look there's way too much curve to to actually see these ships and we could see them and and he goes we could also see them with infrared at night and mm. this missile system absolutely required that the target was painted 
and he would go on and on about this stuff and and you know navigation was all screwed up and he goes you know every navy, navy ship has to has to correct constantly for navigation stuff and sometimes you show up to port early you know or sometimes you show up late depending on you know he goes the maps are all wrong but nobody nobody puts you know one and one together they they don't they don't connect the dots and so yeah if it was me sorry uh, short answer when Sean McCrary came out again completely okay I'll, I'll tell you exactly the moment was it was when Sean validated himself because lots of people are like oh anybody could call up and say you he's a United States Navy missile guy and Careful. Sean made two videos completely unsolicited where you know in fact Jonathan was going man you don't want to come out you know you got to remain anonymous and Sean's going no 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 he goes I want to do this and he shot two videos. One was him, uh, a selfie video of him flying on a, a military helicopter to, yeah. the, to the, the boat he was stationed on, which was the Iwo Jima. And the other was the, the missile, the inside of the, the missile training room, which yeah. I didn't even know existed, which was you take basically a building that looks like a gymnasium. It's so well let on the inside. It's got really high ceilings and really wide. It's like, it, like a giant empty basketball court. And you put mm. and and it's got these sparrow missile systems sitting in the middle of it. It's like, oh, of course, because you're going to train on this. Therefore, you don't have to train on the ship. You know, I'm moving. You know, with the weather conditions, you know everything about the 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 missile systems. And he he takes it. He it's really quiet, and he's showing everybody. And then he flips. He doesn't say a word. And then he flips the camera, and he he points at the cocktail napkin, and he writes flat Earth. And then he writes underneath it, Mark Sargent. <laughs> and, he, and he turns and he turns the cocktail uh, o napkin over to where no one sees it. He flips it around to his face. He's wearing his dress uniform. He smiles, and that's the end of the video. And nice. I realized right then it's like, okay, we're we're now in a it, you know this is this is going this is it's going to go to another level. And so that was the point. That was the point for you, though. That was that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was like okay. okay, because at that point I had somebody. That I could, I could, I could direct. It's like I go, don't take my word. That was the first time I could actually say, don't take my word for it. Listen to this guys is four like to him. Five months. This is like four to five months after you put out the first clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until yeah. until then, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, because I know like uh, Rob Skiba. You know, it took him like eight months, and he was doing show after show after show. You know, he'd be saying all the proofs, and he'd be showing this, and then he'd be like, but I'm not a flat earther. But I'm not a flat earther, right? And it took him a long time. It was a real frustrating journey for a lot of people just because he just would not commit. Right. Um, so for you, though, it was about four to five months. Well, it was, but I, I was a little different than Rob in that I had no, I, I didn't have an established subscriber base, so Correct. I had nothing to lose. So Correct. I while I was saying I was a flat earther, and, and I was, I w there was still, you know, that nagging feeling that someone was, you know, I was holding my breath and waiting for some academic to come forward and say, okay, here's where you're absolutely 100% wrong. Sure. Um, whereas Rob was hanging on saying, well, no, I'm only a 90 something percent flat earther. No, I always yeah. said I was 100%, <laughs> but I, but I, any fear I had finally just evaporated when um, Sean McCurry came out. Uh, and, and for then, you, it was, it was coming across the video about flight paths. That was pretty much your your entry into this entire topic was the flight path. Yeah, was, was yeah, by by a, a video, a guy, a, a creator out of Germany of all things, uh, named Cesar C A E space S A R, and I don't know if his his channel's still out there. And it was completely in German, and I don't I don't know German. And he was talking about the the flight paths and and how they just did not make sense on a globe because he goes because look at the, the the double and triple connections he goes they don't make sense and i knew nothing about flight paths and nothing about how the airline industry works and when i watched that that it got me thinking enough again i didn't believe it but it's like okay you know it, like 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 a lot of people it's like okay it's interesting enough that i'm going to pursue it further um, sure sort of like the uh the google rep and we can talk about that later if you want. Uh, the software guy who came out uh, a couple, at least at least eighteen months ago, where he said they asked him why does Google recommend what they do on the sidebar? You know, recommended for you. Uh, and he goes, well, if the average f person that gets into flat Earth watches twenty videos in a row, <laughs> he goes, what what do you think we're gonna recommend? And not only are we going to, you know, push that to other people that get into Flat Earth, you know, we're going to push that to anyone that goes to anywhere near Flat Earth. And that's what they did for three years. Oh, the good old days. Oh, the good yeah, old days. Yeah, the good old days when Google... We'll talk more about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about more about that. 
Yeah, for definitely. Sure. Well, that, that, that's interesting because I think a lot of people, you know, know of you, but they don't really understand that kind of your journey and that even from the very beginning, it wasn't solidified until the summer of 2015. No. Where you came out, you know, in, in February. Um, you know, I was watching those videos early on. I didn't start my YouTube channel until August of 2015. But that's when I finally was like, that's it. I'm putting my name. I'm putting myself out there. Throwing you your, know, throwing I'm, your head. I'm 100%. The... I'd done all my research by then, you know? Yeah. And I was blown away. But I can say that, you know, coming across your video, and, and I'm sure, you know, some people have heard my story, but I actually, interesting enough, came across a video from 2007. And I did, I documented this, and I pulled it up, like, live on the video. You won't believe how I came to Flat Earth. But uh, it was, it was uh, atheists making fun of the Bible. And anyways, it had Flat Earth in the title. And I'm like, Flat Earth? And after I watched that video, which really kind of woke me up, I typed in Flat Earth, and sure enough, Flat Earth Clues. So number two video nice. was Flat Earth Clues. And I'll tell you, when I watched, you know, you just, you know, your voice and just the, the, the graphics, and just how you laid it out, and you went through each one, uh, it was just putting all those, uh, connecting all the dots, you know, for me, awesome. right? And it was like, oh, my goodness, like, could this be true? This is nuts. Like, this is nuts. <laughs> you know, me being a hardcore kind of conspiracy theorist, it still was too much for me. That's why this topic is so tough and so difficult. Oh yeah. Because even for the even for the biggest conspiracy theorists, this is just out there. You know, this isn't left field. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and the only reason I, I mean, I was I've always been a fairly open minded guy, uh, but but like anyone, I was in complete denial about this thing where I just wouldn't look at it. And and I think you've heard me say this before, where what caught me what caught me off guard was I had a visceral response to even clicking on the first flat earth video i mean i was sitting there alone in a house i'd been living in you know by myself pretty much the better part of 20 years in in boulder colorado and i'm clicking on a video and i'm actually i actually get physically flushed and i'm going why am i getting embarrassed i've 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 gone through every dirty corner of the internet and nothing's bothered me before why <laughs> yeah. would this bother me right Sure. And that's what happened. It was like, it's, and then all of a sudden, and I, and I caught myself doing it. I was going, there's something going on here. And so that's, and the more I clicked on it, the easier it got. But I completely understand people's reactions when they, you know, you know when they have that knee jerk reaction and, you know, call it, call it horrible things and question the education of, of the school that you went to and, and all this other stuff. But that's, again, I, I tell them, I go, look, it's conditioning. I go, uh, you know, you, you have the globe in your classroom. If you're in the United States, right underneath the American flag, usually, and oh, the yeah. American flag is with you your entire academic career. And you remember, mm -hmm. you know, just going through the 12 years of high school, uh, you're willing to fight for that flag. Right? You're, a lot of mm -hmm. people join the military. And so what's the difference between that flag and the globe? Almost nothing. They both symbolize the same thing. You know, they're an sure. icon. They're your home. And they've been with you your entire life. So I absolutely understand when, when people brace against it. What was your yeah. first? Uh, your, what was the first flat Earth documentary that you came across? Not including flat Earth clues made into a documentary, but what was the first documentary that you came across that kind of really, uh, you know, is one of note that uh, you can think of way back? Well, that's just it. There really weren't any longer documentaries. though? Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about now. We're getting into like, let's just say, getting into end of 2015 into 2016. You know, you, they start popping up. I just don't know if there's any particular of note for you that you were like, wow, you know, that really. Oh, you, you mean know, like a compilation? Um, yeah, it can be a compilation. Oh, yeah, no, just, no, there, there, that's just it. There really weren't. And, and that's, that was where I kind of lucked out again. I, you, you, you know, I'm fond of saying that I didn't invent flat earth, but what I did do was I created the dummies guide for flat earth. And I know that sounds sure. redundant and, and I don't want to say that too much because people will just turn it into a meme or a joke. But it's, it's like a 101. It's like a 101. It is. It is. It's, it's very, flat Earth yeah, 101, yeah. and that was the difference between you know, yeah. Matt had some. Matt had some decent stuff out there, and of course, Eric Dubay had some stuff out there. Uh, but they were second, second, and third year books. If you treat it like sure. a like a university, nobody had sure. made a 101 book, and sure. I ne I needed a 101 book just because I I knew the audience I was going to talk to. So I made, you know, I made the, the, I made it and there was really nothing. In fact, I, I kind of, you know, when I released it, I didn't even release it in a giant form. I released it, you know, one per day in a very, I, yeah. my YouTube channel was so y new in terms of publishing that I wasn't even allowed to make videos over 15 minutes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah I remember and that. so, yeah. and then, but some bigger, well, some other channels grabbed them. That's when everything changed. What, yes. what I because I made it Creative Commons license and people grabbed them and they compiled them 
and put them on their channels. And pe I was getting way too many emails from these guys saying, oh, yeah, I loved your two-hour presentation. Oh, hey, I loved your movie. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I'm thinking, okay. Why did you? Why did you do a Creative Commons license? Like, I've always been curious, you know, and that's great. It's wonderful uh, to see that. It's very rare to see that. And, and the fact is that you did that on every one of your videos right from the very start. Creative Commons. What what made you choose Creative Commons? Well, because I really, because I wanted the answers as fast as I could. Meaning, okay, okay if I'm going to put this out there, first of all, I don't care about thumbs up or thumbs down. So I turned that off and I turned off comments and it wasn't monetized, obviously. And mm -hmm. so, but I, had, I wanted people to get a hold of me. So I put out my, you know, my name and my phone number and which was so smart. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, rec I don't recommend people doing. That. In fact, women today, I don't, I still don't recommend women doing that. Um, and then, and I figured, okay, well, how else can I get this thing to spread? And when I read the little details about Creative Commons and, and YouTube, they said, well, people can grab your video and share it with other people, and they sure. don't have to ask you permission for it. I'm going, that's an awesome idea. <laughs> I go here, take my video. I mean, what, what did I know? And some sure. of these guys were pushing. By the time we were done. Some of these guys were pushing two, four million hits. On sure. these. Yeah. Wow. So, and they could monetize yeah. it. So it's like, okay, well there's, there's thousands of dollars, which is, I, I'm happy for them. Uh, <laughs> but it was, um, it, that's, that's why I did it. I creative commons. It just, that means if you read the definition, it just says, well, mm -hmm. people can share it with other people. In fact, YouTube even kind of encourages it, uh, which is, yeah. which is funny because most people don't. Um, yeah. and, and, and people can grab it and they don't have the, the point is they don't have to ask you it's no. if they can put it on their channel, they can just grab it. And grab I was going super yeah. great. Go for it. Wonderful. And, and it, mm -hmm. maybe I can get some answers from academia quicker that way. And again, it came back to haunt me. So, yeah, well, I don't know. If, I don't, I don't think it came to haunt you at all. I think by doing that, I think that it just spread your work that much more. I honestly, I believe oh, that, yeah. that yeah. It, it, it didn't hurt you one bit. Um, it, it's very, very smart. It's not that it was a strategy at all. It's just what you decide to do. Uh, but honestly, that can definitely help. I've seen cases before, not in this topic, but other ones where they've done that and they've expanded. Their name has become a lot more uh, renowned and just their work just because they do that. They make it a lot easier for people to share it, to mirror it, to uh, compile it, to do whatever they want with it. Right? Sure. And to me, it shows that you're really not in it for the money. Well, no, you know, no, I didn't. Show. I didn't want it to be a production. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I <Correct>. was, <laughs> I was perfectly happy doing what I was doing. Well, I say that all the time. I say one of the biggest proofs that Mark wasn't just throwing this stuff out there, you know, for the money, is he made a Creative Commons for goodness sakes. I did, yeah. and, and, and he put that up that anybody could take it and they could do whatever they want with it. it you know, so to me, the the Creative Commons license really spoke uh, loud and clear as far as your intentions and and. How how they've remained now sure you might decide to monetize or do something but the fact is your stuff is still creative common oh yeah yeah right? yeah my and my default my default setting and has that has never changed for no. four years it is still set at creative commons now of course if yeah. i'm using copyrighted music or whatever sure you're not going to be able to do anything with it anyway you're no. not you're not going to get the nickel but, but you can still take it even if it has copyrighted music you still put you can still mirror it oh, yeah. i mean it's not even about it's not even about monetizing your content it's about being able to mirror it and allowing them to like yeah. you're not you're not coming down on another channel saying hey that's my flattery clues you're not allowed to mirror that and, you're just like go ahead and you, mirror it all you want you know where it they also it. helps there's a there's a secondary side to that which i didn't really figure out until later it was just dumb luck which was if a troll wants to take it and chop it up and start making fun of me Hey, great, fantastic! I've never thrown a copyright strike in my life. If you want to take no. make a video of me and and you know put clown music over the top and arrows, you know, <laughs> saying that I'm a dork, it would be a full time job, Mark. It would be a full time job for you to actually go after everyone that's making fun of you. Oh my god, I mean, yeah. There's again, no way. There's, there's no yeah, way I could do it. Stuff now. But but yeah, no, I would never. Something. I would never throw a strike anyway because it's like, look, no. it, it. I go. You've heard me say it many times, which is, uh, it, all you're doing, and I don't know why they don't listen. Uh, maybe for, for you know, maybe things are are going to go the way they're meant to be, which is you're just firing wooden arrows into a bonfire. That's all yep. you're doing from a distance. Yeah. It really looks like there's a lot of activity and you're accomplishing something. You're just making yep. the fire bigger. But I agree. Yeah, I agree. They just keep 100%. doing it. Like I said, case in point, I came across a video making fun of it, right? Really trying to go to town in a cartoon format. Yeah. And, you know, all of a sudden, little did that atheist know that God was going to use it to basically, you know, humble me, change me. And basically, all of a sudden, now, you know, I'm doing international conferences. You know, I've done documentaries, written a book. You right. know, now I'm doing the, you know, the radio show. Well, little did that atheist know, you know, the, the laugh's on him. 
right? Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. it's, exactly. it's spreading. So that's I, I'm never fearful of bad press or or uh, a piece where they're making fun of flat earthers because, quite honestly, most of us laugh at it when we when we first hear it. The, the, it doesn't really matter. The saying, and I know it's been kind of changed into um, uh, any 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 even bad press is good press. But the original saying I, I actually like better, which is, even bad press is free. And you, yeah. know, you you can't put you know there's some there's some marketing exposure. I mean, there's a reason why they call it marketing dollars. And uh, in fact, the clip which I use for my promo, uh, which I'm gonna make a, a another version of eventually, when when LeBron James, you know, was asking Kyrie Irving on on international cameras, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you know, is the Earth still you know is the Earth flat? It's like, do you know how hard that you you couldn't even if I had a briefcase of money, I could not get LeBron James to say that on camera. And he did yeah. it for <laughs> free, and yeah. and the secondary media explosion when when yeah. every sports yeah. station jumped on that was mm -hmm. like oh I mean, you you couldn't it was it was priceless to us. Well, so, let's say we into let's say we into like Netflix because I think uh, you know for people that are listening, uh, this is probably where they'll probably you know resonate or understand maybe or have heard your name. Right. But behind the curve. I mean, it exploded. Obviously, you can maybe talk a little bit about behind the curve, but also just the explosion that took place after Netflix. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It so it, the the documentary behind the curve, and and you got to remember that when documentaries are made, I mean, you know, there are there's I don't know, mi we'll just round it up, a million filmmakers <laughs> in the world, probably more, and most of them can't even get their productions off the ground, let alone you know actually finish whatever movie they're thinking of making yeah. and out of those you know you get like like the toronto film festival was a perfect example where uh, you know because producers come and go and people make promises all the time and they they shot this movie and they shot it in seven months and there were three thousand film submissions to the toronto film festival that out of those they pick 100 and we were picked as 100 and then and and that and multiple film festivals and People and we kept making this top ten list. We weren't making winning any awards, you know, because most of the awards go to some politically charged thing about some atrocity sure. somewhere. They're sure, they're dark yeah. and gritty, and the this thing just kept making the the you know the top ten movies you should see during this festival. And then we started making movies you must see also in mainstream. And then the producers were like, well, okay, we get we you know fine, we did twenty eight film festivals in seven countries or something like that. And, you know, but it's not, you know, it's probably not going to sell. And even if it did sell, it's, it's, it'd take several years to, to sell. And it sold almost immediately. It was picked up by Amazon and Google Play and iTunes and, and YouTube Red. And then, and that was, that was the back part of last year. And then in November, they, uh, Netflix picked it up and they released it. And I, to, I, I, I I severely underestimated the Netflix market share. Same, same, wow. same. Yeah, yeah, I mean every apparently, and I got it because uh, when I was staying up in Canada with a uh, with a woman recently, that's all she used. If you're under the age of thirty, chances are because it's such a cheap bang for your buck, you're going to have sure. Netflix. Period. Sure. Uh, it's yeah. you know for fifteen bucks a month, and I look, I've gone through their catalogs. It's huge for fifteen bucks a month. It's it's the best bang for your buck you got. So, yep. so it's all of a sudden, and then they've got a category, you know, the category is the way they're laid out. They push it to the front and people start clicking on it. And the more they click yeah. on it, it's sort of like YouTube. The more they click yeah. on it, the more it trends, the more it trends, the more, you know, it just keeps standing, you know, staying up at the front. Yeah. I think it's still yeah. towards the front of all documentaries right now anyway, even now. Yes. And all of a sudden instantly, yeah, my, my email load doubled. I, I think within a week and people that's when I realized because people were coming out of the woodwork people I hadn't talked to since high school Jaron was was telling me the same stuff I mean a lot yeah. of people is like the the people you didn't get to in the previous years you were now sure. getting to uh, sure. and now it had kind of jumped it had jumped the rails outside of the internet and which is why honestly we can get to that later which is why YouTube doesn't have to try doesn't have to help us anymore um, once it got to Netflix, now it was a topic that could, what I call a, a campfire talk, topic, which is yeah. you can bring it up to anyone. It's like at a water cooler or a campfire or it's just something. It be, it's become now what I call uh, the end of the conversation, which is, oh, that's a good title for a book. The, <laughs> the, the end of the conversation, which is um, 
when you're when you're talking with somebody when you first meet him, it's like, oh yeah, you talk about the weather and the local sports teams, and and usually the conversation ends with somebody with with you exchanging interesting things. Like it's like, oh yeah, I heard that you you eat three ounces of dark chocolate a day, your cancer risk is reduced, or. You know, I heard that, you know, something, something, whatever it is happened. Somebody died, somebody lived, somebody had a baby. It's usually something interesting and weird. And now Flat Earth has become part of that conversation. It's usually the, the trump card that people throw down. It's, and which is why I love, you know, the, um, uh, and I'm saying this in the book and I don't care anymore um, because I'm not going to name who I heard it from, which is the Amy Adams story, which is, you know, where she was listening. She was at a celebrity thing and she said, uh, and people were talking about conspiracies and she threw down flat earth, even though she hates flat earth. And I'd like to make that very, very clear. <laughs> she threw it down like a trump card. She goes, no, you can put that to bed. You know, let me tell you what my family's into. <laughs> she throws okay. it down and, and she go and she proceeds to try to destroy flat earth in front of these A-listers. And during this proposed destruction, she converts them. And a, a number of wow. them, because they're like, you know, because if you, somebody talks about it with such passion, it's like, oh, I hate this so much, you know, and, and you're like, you, you know, you're, you got your phone on you. It's like, yeah, what's this flat earth thing? <laughs> you start looking into it. So it's awesome. Um, it's, uh, I'm sorry, I don't even know where we were when I, where, where we started on that road. Oh, we were talking about like, obviously Netflix. Oh, yeah, yeah, ne yeah. So ne yeah, Netflix, Netflix became freaking huge. And now it is to where I was, you know, I've, and, and I don't go out much. Remember, I'm, a, I'm on a rural island north of Seattle. But when I go certain places, yeah, people look at me and, and say stuff. And, and here, you're getting recognized. I, I, you get recognized actually in uh, restaurants and even on planes now. Yeah, uh, yes. Oh, you want me to tell you? So, yes, yeah, so we're flying down to the, um, the, the New Zealand conference because, you know, that's a thing, a Flat Earth New Zealand conference. Never been to Auckland in my life, and here I'm going to, to this. And um, there, I, there was a guy passing around bread. <laughs> we were in business class. <laughs> and, and, he, and he looks at me, and he goes, you want any bread? You know, that's what happens in business class. And I go, no, I don't want any bread. And he goes, he goes are you sure? He's looking at me, kind of like he knows me. And I go, okay, fine. I'll have a couple of those garlic things right there. And, and he goes, yeah. He goes, he, he's handing them to me. He goes, he goes, you want them because they're flat. And they're round, <laughs> and I and he winks at me, and he goes, "I have to pass, I have to pass out more bread." And he goes down down the aisle, and I'm going, "What is happening?" I go, "And you're with your mom." That's the funniest part about this story is you're with your mom in this one. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got witnesses to this. This was I know, I know. Uh, this your mom was, told me. Your mom told me when we were in New Zealand. Yeah, wow. it, it's just blew me. And we got to the hotel. You know, I mean, again, it, it, we're we're talking about. We got to the hotel and the this kid he couldn't have been I don't know twenty eight I'm I'm older so he, everyone looks young and he he looks at me he's staring at me he goes I know you from somewhere and I go okay where because I'm not going to give him any hints and he goes Netflix right and I go yes I go the flat Earth documentary he goes right and then he goes you know and I I hear this more and more maybe it's a younger generation thing. You just can't condemn people anymore. It's not cool uh, anymore. So he goes, he goes, you know, he goes, I don't believe in it because, but I really respect you got, you know, you and the others, you know, coming out and, and speaking your mind and staying, staying true to your, to your, um, your ideas. And I go, wow, that's, that's really awesome, man. That's great. And, you know, just over and over. And, you know, on the way home in Los Angeles, uh, I'm just sitting at a, a, at a sports bar um, at the airport and, you know, waiting for the flight. And, and, and a young couple comes up and says, hey, can, can we get a selfie with you? We, we just watched the documentary, you know, a couple days ago. Really, really cool. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure. So, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, too, because at Netflix, too, I wonder if there's almost a close to a petition being uh, put together about uh, seeing you and Patricia get together. Maybe for the record, you can kind of explain that you're just oh, great friends. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. I've heard that tons. Even people that reach out to me, they're like, what's going on? Like, you think they're ever going to get together? I'm like, oh, I think they're just great friends. But yeah. unbelievable, because they use the love story kind of element, you know, in Behind the Curve, they have all, kind of all aspects. they got the uh, nefarious uh, the arch enemy. They've got the, you know, they've got all these aspects. But one of the, the key things you hear from a lot of people is that love story, right? Yeah, Mark, people, love story. people don't understand the, the 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 power of creative editing and what editing i mean george lucas exactly. was like a, a big believer in that and it's like it doesn't matter how much footage is shot it all comes down to the editing and the the editors i will say this a behind the curve 
maximized what they had. Uh, you know, yeah. they, they took shots at Jared, they took shots at Bob, and they created, um, uh, they enhanced, I should say, uh, a romance between Patricia Steer and I, which had, we, you know, Patricia Steer and I had, had um, delved into the, the idea back in 2016, I believe. Sorry, what? 2016. Not I even 2016, 2015. Was it 2015? It was 2015. Yeah, it was 2015. Oh, right. it, it, we, wow. we, we, had, we had met and, uh, and kept it really, really quiet because we didn't know, you know, what, we didn't know where, where the community was. The community was really, really small. And uh, so when they, when they shot the, when they did the movie, they really focused on the, the um, you know, she had gone to, to London in 2016 and yes. by the time so but and the movie was shot in 2017 but they made it seem current and they even took some footage that patricia and i had when she came up here for a meetup in seattle and we were, we went across on a ferry and she filmed the whole thing they mm -hmm. they showed that it was great production value i gotta i gotta hand it to them they showed it like that was when we first met and yeah. it was it was it was all just an illusion you know, and, and yeah. they, they played up on that angle and uh, but I will say this. I, I will say this. I'm not I'm not going to lie to the listeners because uh, I try not to lie anymore, <laughs> which is that that <laughs> one moment, because that's really where they got this from. That one moment where I was sitting at next to her when we were down at Houston at her house and, the, and you know, I was going to be going home and I was kind of pining for her. You know, they caught a couple looks on camera. Those looks were absolutely authentic. I will say that, and which is, I hadn't seen her really since um, in person since the uh, uh, she had gone to London, and since I went up to Canada for a year and, and spent a year in That's Victoria. Right. So yeah. seeing her, no, I mean, come on, I mean she's she's a knockout, and she and I got along very well. And the secret, the whole reason the secret show thing evolved was because we were talking about Flat Earth so much privately. Mm -hmm. that she, well we all of a sudden it's like you know we're just wasting production value here we should just film this because because it was all it was all safe it was it wasn't like we were you know just swearing and drinking and doing drugs and you know doing all these horrible things on camera we were we were yeah. it was all it was all good so yeah the film the film really pushed it and so when i was in arkansas i felt bad because people i mean i was asked that when i was down in new zealand you know a radio station mm -hmm. asked me but the worst one was in arkansas when i was uh, when the film, you know, I went up for a and a after Behind the Curve at the film festival at Hot Springs and I go up to the front and like the second question was, well, what about Patricia? Right. And yeah. and this guy's asking and he's enthusiastically he wants to know w how it panned out. And he was not alone. At least I, I think half the audience were like nodding their head going, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah what happened? <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> And because, you know, I, you know, watching the movie and being in it, I knew what was going on. And, and so what I tell people is I go, look, you know, we we know we have on screen chemistry and we also know we make a good team. Uh, but as far as this, you know, this goes, we're, well, I, we, we, I don't know. I, I try to tell people, I go, look, I don't know where I'm even going to be in six months because sure. the producers have been swimming around like sharks for the last two years. So who, who knows what, what's, what's going to happen with anybody? I, I mean, I can't even tell you where I'm going to be, let alone what I'm going to Well, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that after the break. We've got like another hour to go here. Okay. Into hour two. But uh, before we do, if you can kind of mention any um, links, anywhere you want to kind of promote as far as... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Um, to find me, it's real super easy. Just uh, Google Flat Earth Clues. That's the easiest way. You'll find the clues. And uh, my main website is called Enclosed world.com and the book is called flat earth clues and the movie is called behind the curve cool that's, that's pretty that's pretty simple what is going on with in cole's world you used to have like a subscription maybe you want to mention oh that well well like uh, thank you for mentioning that uh, it used to be mark sergeant.com that was a small time producer named joe real out of san diego and the, no good deed goes unpunished he, he said, oh, yeah, I'll do a, a subscription site for you. I'll give you half the money. It's like, okay, sure. And he buys the rights to MarkSargent.com. He doesn't give me any money. And, wow. then, and then I never hear from him again until I said, hey, can I buy Mark Sargent back? And, and he goes, yeah, $5,000. It's like, uh, go to hell. 
So <laughs> he can he can do whatever. But so if anybody out there is still subscribed to MarkSargent.com, and I don't think there's many people, uh, yeah, please please do not give them any money. Go to your credit card and, and cancel that payment because uh, I I don't get a dime for that. I mean it's great. The I, metrics I, are still out I there. I find it interesting now though that when you do actually go to YouTube and you type in Flat Earth Blue, sure it brings up Mark Sargent your channel. Yeah. But when you're actually looking for the videos, they're nowhere to be found. You've got all these debunking videos, just like anything when you type in Flat Earth now. It's uh, pretty oh, yeah. dismal. We can talk more about the censorship right. uh, and that stuff in, in hour two. But uh, what would you say so far right now kind of has been one of the big highlights for you, though, um, you know, in this journey? You've been in this, you know, obviously since early 2015. Is there anything that kind of stands out? Uh, uh, you know, one yeah, one? yeah. The, the big standout moment for me was when I when everything was just going to a, a new level, when National Geographic uh, flew me down to Los Angeles to do the segment, even though they hated us. And then during that, uh, you know, I got to, you know, Patricia and, and Rob Skiba and I were invited up to an A-lister's home in, in the Palm Springs, you know, to talk about Flat Earth. And, you know, during the National Geographic shoot, it was just one of the most bizarre things ever. I mean, you know, we're, we, we go to a meetup that was, you know, basically set up, you know, by, by Nat Geo and we ended, you know, making new friends. And they told us how big this thing really was. It was great to see that scope. It was a real eye opener. It's like wow. It's like the. I mean, I it to to hear that it basically and it made sense to me that that remember flat Earth doesn't care uh, how rich, how famous, um, how talented, how beautiful you are. It can get into just about every conversation. It, it doesn't care about demographics. Yeah, so for sure. And there was a lot of people that came out to uh, when the National Geographic, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, that, uh, that meetup at least had 100, 110, 120 people. And wow. I mean, it was it was tough to even figure them all out. And and again, the, the I'm sorry, there was another thing. CBS was there at the same time. And there was a turf war between. That's right. They were fighting. They were fighting, they were fighting. Uh, the National Geographic because they paid for me to come down. Just, you know, my tickets, they didn't pay me any money. Uh, they they said that CBS couldn't talk to me, and so CBS wanted they were gonna have they were gonna talk to Jaron. Jaron was a no show, so they talked to Patricia, and they put and CBS put it up on uh, you know did a wonderful interview with Patricia on CBS Sunday Morning with Jane Pauley, and then it was up on YouTube. And once it hit about a million hits, they were getting too much peer pressure from their older audience, and they pulled it. They they pulled the clip and it's like wow, wow. CBS caving in. They actually pulled they actually pulled that interview with Patricia. Oh yeah, yeah they pulled it entirely. I mean I, I remember because it was top of the charts for for several months. Oh, I remember. I and remember. I and remember. then well, all of a sudden people it, have it downloaded. Yeah, it was gone and I yeah. couldn't find it anywhere. And it, and 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 I looked in my archives and it's like no, it had been removed. It wasn't like it was made private. It was it was removed and it was like. Did you ever download it? Did you oh yeah, download yeah 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 yeah. No, are you kidding? Okay. No, I mean her her okay. her trailer right now uses snippets from it and it is absolutely on my channel. Uh, yeah. It's it no, I've got evidence. In fact, I made a video with it. I wasn't even gonna mirror it on my channel until they pulled it. And then once I put it up there, I said, oh yeah, CBS kills it, and I knew why. I mean, it's because their audience skews older. I mean, CBS is an older network and yep. they, you know, those people, the, the, a lot of their members, you know, they, some of them watched Apollo, you know, from, yeah. from their television <laughs> yeah. sets. And they're like, wait a minute, what? Because CBS gave us a fair shake. And that was, they did not destroy us. Uh, that Patricia did a brilliant interview and yeah. they, they were very kind and yeah. you know, they, they didn't support us obviously, but even that neutral stance did not sit well. And so that's why they pulled it. But anyway, that all that happened yeah. in literally a, a, a one week span. And that was, yeah, my favorite week uh, so far, which is like all this just stuff is happening. I was getting these new perspectives of who liked us, who didn't, you know, Nat, Nat Geo hated us. CBS wanted to shoot us. And I just, and I, oh, we gotta go. Okay. Oh, we gotta yep. go. Okay. Hold that thought, hold that thought. 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 Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. Hello, all you good looking people out there in Revolution Radio. This is Mario. I invite you to join me Thursdays at 6 o'clock for this, that, and the other. The show about you, the show about me, but ultimately to show where we try to have a little bit of fun. We discuss important topics. We do our best to be apolitical. 
So I invite you, put on your favorite pair of comfy sweats, your smoking jacket, and grab a beverage of your choice, and join me Thursday evenings at 6 o'clock for This, That, and the Other on Revolution Radio. Enter into a world unseen on Raven Star's Witching Hour. You will encounter eclectic topics from the realm of spirit brought into our matrix of truth. With your host, the Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris will bring you an array of unique guests covering topics from ghostly spirits to amazing anomalies, covert technology, UFOs, and shadowy global events. And that's right here at Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com, Saturdays, midnight till 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Let the magic rise. From the astral realms to the physical plane, the halls of power to the walls of home, the multiverse to the innerverse, all will be haunted by the ghost in the machine I am Steve Zeraloff the ghost in the machine Mondays 10pm Eastern Standard Time Studio B exclusively here on Revolution dot radio Extendivite really works just listen to what some people have to say Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It was just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm on to something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hey, welcome back to uh, Celebrate Truth Radio, exposing the world's lies and celebrating the truth every Saturday on Revolution Radio. I'm your host, Robbie Davidson. Join with me is my co-host, Pastor Nate Wolf, and our special guest is Mark Sargent. In hour one, we were going through a lot of stuff, and we're going into a lot here in hour two. And I wanted just to bring up this, uh, Mark, with you, obviously talking about a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. One thing I wanted to make sure that I got to mention here on my show, because I get a lot of people reaching out to me. They're like, are you okay? You and Mark okay still? Even though the fact that we're on tour, we've done three conferences already this year, and we're going to do like three more. Uh, people are still asking, are you and I are okay? Okay, first off, I never liked you. Second... <laughs> <laughs> I, ha- I just had to because people still reach out to me, even though they know we're like watching on tour, you know, hanging out. And, by uh, that, I mean people, as a person. I just really just, no. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't have any problem with you at all. No, I know. And of course, we're, we're, we're talking a little bit about the. Um, we're, we're, what we we're, talked about, we talked about behind the curve. So obviously, let's talk about Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about Logan Paul. No, no, I, I um, don't blame you for a second uh, about the Logan Paul thing because uh, if I was in your shoes and I, I like to consider myself very empathetic when it comes to that, uh, I may have done the same thing. And that is, look, it's a, produce, it's a producer's dream when uh, somebody buys VIP tickets that you recognize. Absolutely. And Logan Paul. General admission. The what? General admission. 
they bought general admission tickets. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. General admission tickets. Either way. Um, I mean, if you recognize the name of people, and, and he does. I mean, look, a guy that has millions of subscribers, millions. I mean, he has more subscribers than most of the, if not all, the 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 Flat Earth community combined. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a lot of subs. So uh, when when I did my thing at the conference, when I left the conference early, it had nothing to do with uh, you just kind of, I mean, it, it, it was, I had no hard feelings towards you. And yeah. uh, I mean, I knew that you were under a lot of stress. And normally, I, I probably would have even told you about this going out, but I didn't want you to be put in that sort of position. And so, no, I have absolutely no problem with you whatsoever. Uh, I have told people, I have told people, and this was even actually, I think, even just a couple of days after it actually happened. But I said, had you had come to me, even though you would have been, you know, oh, I don't want to put you in this position, I would have gladly said to Logan, I'm sorry, we just don't have time. If you had just brought up, said, Logan, oh, I know, I, want I know, Logan to come up. I know, it, I mean, I can't look back on it, and it, it happened <clears> what it happened, but. I just wanted to go on the record and make sure that you were, you know, we've talked about this before, but everyone, the community as a whole, I would have definitely not risk losing you uh, for the community and for everyone involved uh, to basically have some guy that's kind of a firecracker, kind of unpredictable right. going up, you know, for five minutes to what's he going to say? I mean, I still was a little bit scared on what could happen on the stage at the time though. He seemed very respectful. Nothing happened, but I would never allow one of my speakers to feel, you know, uh, you know, uncomfortable. Uh, no, going I, I got forward, you. Though, yeah, I going got you. forward, though, you know, I, it's never going to happen because like you saw in New Zealand when I was bringing up certain names, I'm making sure that going forward, all the speakers are included on any type of quote unquote surprise. Right, you know, right, right. That the community is well informed. So we're never going to run into that problem again. But no, I mean, for the record, I mean, Mark and I are awesome. I say this to many people, but I still get countless people uh, contacting me like, are, are, are you OK? Are you and Mark, are you OK? Are you guys still fighting? I'm like, we never were. No, fighting. no, no. We never were fighting. <laughs> and and I put that I put that in the book, by the way, uh, which to, I tried to clear the air on just about every issue I could think of, uh, including Logan Paul. Um, including Metatron, including, uh, you know, the thing I, I won't get into too much. I wanna, I'm not going to give it all away. But the point is, is that what what I what I care about more than anything is the community. And I if I basically had to I, I wanted to be the insurance card on this one, which was I, I there was no way in case things did go south, he couldn't be allowed to punk the entire community. And uh, and that and that's in the end he didn't because otherwise he gets to run the, the headline gets to run logan paul punks all of flat earth and sure. somebody with that little uh I, you know what he's not even worth me tearing down <laughs> no and i've always been happy yeah. because if anything with people that were really you know coming against you and really suspicious you know i saw a lot of comments were like wow mark called it you know mark mark knew or mark oh mark sure. didn't have a good feeling and he kind of he was trying to protect the community so i've told you this before but if anything it was something good that happened for you i mean why do you think that you and i mean you're obviously the guest but obviously patricia gets brought up a lot as far as the woman but why do you think you two are like the most hated in the community what what's your feelings on oh that? it's well there's and I, I i will try to be as humble as i can when i say this but envy is there's a reason why envy is one of the seven which is yep. that's it i mean look nobody if all the world's a stage nobody likes to uh you know everyone gets jealous of other people that have more stage time or more light or a brighter spotlight on them um it, i mean look i even yeah. i fall victim to it every time i see a channel that that has more subs than i do <laughs> i squint a little bit it's like okay this is what i don't get though about what? eric Dubé <laughs> or math powerland yeah. both of them were given the opportunity to have the red carpet the spotlight the stage whatever they wanted and both of them kind of refused in a very derogatory way so you know that's always a suspicious different, part where you know no no yeah, for, for me though i remember they're they're completely different yeah. circumstances one sure um eric and and I know this from uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll say it. I, I got no problem saying it at this point. I, I'm older, uh, which is look. I know from a fairly trusted source, and I actually do trust this source that Eric is absolutely scared to death about coming to the states, uh, okay. because he's uh. because he is worried that he is on a no-fly list, uh, an American okay. no-fly list, and I, and I get that. And here's here's why it can be problematic, and that is if he does fly to the United States from Thailand, and he is on a no-fly list. 
uh, it's going to be a little tricky getting back because then you've got really only two options. You either go up to Vancouver or somewhere in Canada and see if you can fly out of there, or you take your chances and try to fly out of Mexico, which I think would be a little dicier. And so I can see where that would be a real fear. And we saw, Mm. we saw a little bit of that even when he was, when he turned down Eddie Bravo's, uh, thing to, to just fly to another Island in the Pacific Rim. He he Correct. he just yeah. he's like nope not gonna do it. It's like wow you didn't even you didn't even blow <laughs> you know let him down softly. It's like you're gonna tell him on air. It's like nope not gonna do it. It's like he just offered you yeah. VIP passes. Um, sure. When it comes to Matt though, I honestly I mean you watch the movie. It's not it's not yeah. an exaggeration. You've talked to Jaron. I mean he's yeah. he's wound up. You talked to Matt. He's wound up really tight yeah. and. I, and I and I said this in my thing. I said, look, unfortunately, for good or better or for worse, Matt could not do a decent interview to save his life. We've seen him try, and he and he mm-hmm. cannot do it. It's like, wow, for a guy that actually did stand up comedy at one point, uh, mm-hmm. he's just uh, so. Anyway, um, yeah. So as far as Patricia and I being hated. Most of it's most of it's just envy. Everybody gets suspicious. Look, you got to remember the audience, the the direct audience. That's the conspiracy crowd. We're naturally. That's why I always say come out and actually meet them. You know, take the time, take the opportunity. Oh, sure. Come out to one of these conferences. It's a great opportunity, not just to meet them, but meet the community. It's so so helpful. But and, I mean, and Pastor Nate. I mean, Pastor Nate can maybe weigh in on this. But again, you yeah. know, being at a few conferences himself, just the how important it is to actually come out and meet people face to face, spend time with them. I mean, right. We're all just people. yeah. You have you have to see for yourself, and you know here's the thing. Like, I mean, Mark Mark can verify. I mean, I don't I don't know him from anything before. I mean, I talked to Mark one time because I thought, hey, this guy puts his phone number <laughs> on YouTube. I I called and talked to Mark briefly, you know. But uh, you know, the thing is, is that you know you hear all these different things about people. This person's a shill, and this person's a government agent. And, you know, since I got fired, I went to several conferences, right? Because right. I had time and uh, I had some people that donated to help me make sure I could get to some of these conferences. Right. And uh, so I got to meet people in person, you know, and and I, I went to several conferences in a row where, hey, there's Mark, there's Patricia, there's, you know, so-and-so. Yeah. And uh, I always have felt like, you know, if you have the opportunity uh, to meet someone, uh, in person and talk with them and formulate an impression, you know, even if you've heard negative about them. I mean, right. why wouldn't you take that opportunity uh, to engage y- yourself right. one-on-one, if, even if it's just for a few minutes? And, uh, you know, I always operate under the idea that, hey, you know, the Bible says do unto others, right, as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. So, you know, my thinking was, hey, uh, if somebody said some bad stuff about me, I would hope that they would uh, take the opportunity to, you know, just spend a few minutes with me. And you know what I was seeing, uh, Mark and Robbie on, you know, Facebook and stuff is you, you have pockets of people that are very negative about conferences and yada, yada, you know, saying, you know, Mark's this and Patricia's that they've never been to a conference. They've never met you guys in person. They've never had any conversations with you. Right. And to me, that's very disingenuous. Yeah, I mean, I, I take some of it with a grain of salt. I mean, yes, I, when, when I meet people live and I hear that I'm better live than anything, I know it sounds like a band, but it's true. They're, he's so much better <laughs> live. Uh, but, but it is, I mean, and it it's can't, true, though. It's but true. it's yeah. true. But there's still going to be people, you know, like Mad Mike still hates me. And uh, I've, <laughs> I've run into other people that, that you know, they, they've got other reasons for hating me. But I, uh, I like to remind people, especially on YouTube, that you really you got to take the comment section with a grain of salt because literally you can make a video sure. uh, of of a puppy chasing a kitten through a, a wonderful meadow and a butterfly landing on the on the dog's nose, and within a hundred comments you're gonna sit you're gonna have somebody say thumbs down this is effing gay unsubscribe it's like yeah, what yeah. and then and then it you know that's just the the intro and then they go into you know everything from religion to sexuality oh hang on my rides here. So, um, the, um, that's a great segue, yeah, the segue into, into the police and into, yeah. into censorship and uh, coming down strong on uh, yeah. flat earth. Now you said that we don't really have to worry about it anymore, but quite honestly, I am quite concerned just with, uh, how far YouTube's going. Just uh, recently, the, there was an article that came out that they're furthering the censorship coming against channels. There was a bunch that were actually deplatformed 
uh, demonetized, oh. and they're only going to increase this. Uh, do you not think that this is a little bit of a concern, considering well, that like YouTube is one of the big ways that people find uh, you know information it, online? It is. In video format? You're absolutely right. It is, and it isn't. If anyone hasn't heard already, uh, YouTube is okay. How this started? Let me let me give you guys a backstory real quick. YouTube was, you know, what they're they're a television network. They are the biggest television network in the world. Plain and simple. I don't care what anyone else tells mm -hmm. you. They have literally a thousand lifetimes worth of content in there at this point. Oh, a lot of it's really, <laughs> really terrible. But they have so, they, something like every minute there's like 80 hours worth of worth of YouTube videos being every minute being uploaded. I mean, you're, you're never going to catch up wow. ever, 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 ever in your life. And what had happened was they were, you know, like any television network, you get your money off of advertising. Companies come to you and they say, we want to put our truck ads on your videos. And it's like, okay, yeah. X number of thousands of dollars, you collect their money and you put their truck ads. But of course, they don't know the internet very well. So you're just putting their ads on everything. You don't approve, you know, it would, I'm sorry, it would take too much time to approve all the videos. It's like, would Chevy truck really approve of this video that we're putting? They don't care. They're just going to throw it out there. Well, you have marketing people from these companies that got really, really upset. It's like, look, some of these videos are ridiculous or we don't agree with their opinion or they're violent or whatever it is. And so, and YouTube says, what are you going to do? We're Google. You know, the parent company is Google. What are you going to do? Pull your ads. And they did. They started pulling, the big corporations started pulling their ads. So YouTube uh. panics and they said, okay. Uh, and so last year, which is known as now as the adpocalypse, they um youtube started demonetizing uh they they started with the video game channels which was people kids that just went out and made video game you know recorded their video games and, and, and streams, put the yeah. ads on them especially yeah. violent video games and so a lot of people you know demonetized and then they started kind of delving into hate speech. There's two types of things that you can get on, on YouTube. You can get a copyright strike, which is just using music or video or whatever, which is not, not really much of anything. Or you can get basically community guidelines strikes, which says you're doing something unethical, like hate speech. And so now they're demon. Not only are they killing channels that are doing hate speech, but if you're on the borderline, they're starting to demonetize and some pull those, some of those channels. And with YouTube, they're kind of in a weird spot. Sorry, I'm taking a long way to get here, but a backstory I think was needed, mm -hmm. which is they're kind of in a tough spot because one, um, Flat Earth has made them a lot of money over the last three, four years, made them a huge mm -hmm. amount of money. I mean, you got to remember, if you're a television network, you encourage binge watching and there's not a lot of topics that someone will sit down and watch 20 videos of. So if Flat Earth is that thing, it's like, okay, Flat Earth is now a binge watch topic. That's that's yep. that's a gold mine to, to YouTube. So it's like, okay, what do we do? But it's a really weird topic and there's lots of people that complain about it, even though their complaints aren't based on hate speech. So we don't fall into the community guidelines thing. We're not inciting riots. It's not like, you know, come on, we we've had hundreds of regional meetups and conferences, not a bad thing has never ever happened. So they can't even queue up and say, you know, ex with the exception of the white supremacy guy who was just tagging, he was tagging flat earth, spray painting flat earth on all these national park things. Yeah. But he, oh, wow. it, he wasn't, he wasn't, the thing was, he wasn't even spray painting white supremacy stuff. He was only sup doing flat earth, but he was a white supremacist. So uh. they were kind of tying that. So the, they're, so what had happened was last year, the uh, the con Congress went to Google and YouTube and they said, OK, what are we going to do about, you know, the, the the borderline stuff that's on on YouTube? And out of all the topics that YouTube brought up, remember, this is to the United States government. They said, yeah. OK, well, we're working on this whole flat earth problem thing. Yeah. And but at the same time, <laughs> that should that should make anyone stop and pause. The fact yeah. that they're bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why, if it's so ridiculous and stupid, are they bringing up that as a concern? And so, yeah, it's absolutely right. But at the same time, they can't. They they want what I've been telling people. It's like, look, they're not putting the brakes on. We, I, I've never, I haven't gotten an email with the exception of Red Pill philosophy, philosophy, and that's a perfect example. Even his channel wasn't taken down; it was just sure. demonetized. And, mm -hmm. and, and they said, look, we're going to recommend it less, <laughs> which is basically, yeah. and you heard me joke about this for years, which is people there's, I, I put a video on my channel and I should bring it back up because it was priceless. This guy who actually made a video and put it up on YouTube and was asking people 
how he could get Flat Earth not recommended to him anymore. Because no matter what he typed in, we kept showing up on his recommended list. He was going, no, <laughs> no thanks, I'm not interested, I no. I remember that. And yeah, it just, dude. it wouldn't yeah. end. I mean, seriously, tractor maintenance. Here's five Flat Earth videos for you. Potato salad recipes. Oh, here's four more Flat Earth videos. It just never <laughs> ended. And so them taking their foot off the gas... I, it's not going to make that much difference. It, it's it, we we've, we've gone we've gone so far off the internet now. Now, does that to your point though, Robbie? Does I that, guess for new people, I, I guess I guess my point. I understand where you're coming from, Mark, right. but I'm talking about for new people that want to you know start voicing for for new people. You, you're absolutely yeah, right. For brand new people that want to actually you know start voicing their uh, you know concerns or just get things out into the open for, on a platform for, such as YouTube. You're you're absolutely right. It will affect new people. Well, there was another rule that went into place though, which was okay. So new people that are trying to get into flat earth and getting really really pumped and want to make flat earth videos they're going to have a really really tough time and also uh the new rule which is if you don't have a thousand subscribers you can't even live stream um yeah. which is which is a whole nother thing you know shout out to zulu one hope he gets his thousand here really soon because i know he's at 980 something um oh, wow. but it also helps us in a way because you remember there's a lot of new channels that are coming out against us uh, sure. A lot of dedicated troll channels and their stuff is getting buried as well. And so, mm -hmm. you know, even though like you can see it in the filters. So if you like typed in Flat Earth today and, and just filter to one day, the top 10, 15 videos, they're almost all trolls, you know, coming, gotcha. coming at us. And but those yeah. get buried now in, in general searches. So, I, I mean, I understand why YouTube's doing it. But you got to remember, they're in a they're in kind of a tight little squeeze right now because they can't. Here's the other thing. Sorry, I got to get this out which is we flat earth is so integrated into so we're so broad now across the YouTube spectrum that if you decided to start killing flat earth channels, you would have to kill every conspiracy out there at that point. At that point, you really, it really goes Orwellian. I mean, at that point you're, yeah. you're, you try to, you, you would have to do a, a general sanitation of YouTube and YouTube has never been America online. It has never been Disney. YouTube has always been YouTube. If you try to turn YouTube into something else, people will leave in freaking droves. And and what will yeah. happen is you'll get a competitor, someone with a lot of money that will start up a brand new channel, you know, brand new server that says, hey, you know sure. what? <laughs> you can bring whatever you want over here and it'll catch on really, really Keyword quick. Keyword is a lot of money. I say that to a lot of people because they're like, why don't we just go to this website or that website? I'm like, do you understand how much money you need to run a video exactly. streaming platform? It's unbelievable. You're right, Mark. It just takes someone yeah. with a lot of it, money it'll be, and resources. It, it'll be supply and demand. If there's enough people whining about it online people Agreed. are going is there i mean how many people have come to me and says is there another place we can go is there another place we can go yeah eventually if there's enough supply and demand if the demand's there someone will Agreed. a producer will come in it what does not take that much i mean yeah it'll take some money to do it but they could you know it just take a basically a big corporation you've already heard of that says oh yeah by yeah. the way we're gonna it's this is the next youtube remember when facebook was never ever gonna decline in any way shape sure. or form Sure. <laughs> and, and now well, it's only older case people case using case it. In point, my, my daughter doesn't even use it. None of her age group does. I mean, they're on Snapchat and other platforms. Right. So no, I mean, there is a lot. There's a huge demographic that don't even touch Facebook with a 10 foot pole. Right. So yeah, like anything, nothing stays on top forever. I'm, uh, I'm, and yeah, the competition's good. In the, in the end, I'm not, I'm not worried because Flat Earth has now gotten to the stage where it is everywhere. It's sure. it's not. I mean, it's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. Well, let's segue. Let's segue into that. As far as where where do you see it going? I mean, not just not just obviously with certain things that you brought up in hour one, but like just really talking to people. Where do you see it going here in the next five ten years? Like, uh, it's it's going to the point where well, we we, I you know, I've always talked about critical mass, and if you, you, you and I, we. We, we've been there back when, when mainstream media, I remember the first article that, I'll give you some perspective, the first article I think I ever charged me up was was when, um, oh, who's the guy that got out of jail, uh, Rob Skiba's mentor. Um, oh, you're talking about Ken Hoven? Ken Hoven. Yeah, when Ken, when, oh, yeah, when yeah. Ken Hoven got out of prison, they asked him about you know it's like what's your opinion on flat earth right and i and i kind of felt like he was hand solo getting out of like the carbonite <laughs> it's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. what i've got it everyone has delusions of grandeur i mean that's what it was like when kent hoven got sure, out of prison sure. he's like you, flat you earth he's just like what flat earth is like how long have i been in <laughs> it's like what happened <laughs> and but the thing was he they asked him about this and it was published in forbes magazine and i mm -hmm. remember it's like wow look at that we're freaking we we got a we got like a two two sentence blurb in in forbes magazine and yeah. the next thing you know 
you flash forward four years later, and that is not a lot of time. Flash your forward for not even four years, four uh, less than four years later, and Jaren's complaining because Newsweek is picking on him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. it's like, dude, and I'm sitting there. It's like, oh yeah, you can complain all you want. I want Newsweek to pick on me, and they won't even talk about me. So it's like, it's, so that's so where are we go? So uh, that that happened in three years. So where are we going from now? Uh, we there's only there's only a couple tiers left. That we haven't broached. One, of course, is um, Primetime Network, which is we still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was really, really happy for Patricia to, to do the CBS thing with Jane Pauley. But that was CBS mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Really interesting that none of the major networks, with exception of super, super late night, like Nightline did a thing on us. But I think it was like pushing midnight prime time. They really don't like talking about us if they can. And that by that, I mean, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. CNN. Well, heck, you were on Australia today. I mean, you were on. You've been on some pretty prime. Yes, I, I did do the Australia, but that was a morning show, and when we so we're we're really close. So yeah, you're absolutely right. We we've gotten to the yeah, point man. now where we should be. We're, we're getting there, and of course, the next thing that I, it's guaranteed, it's going to happen. It's just a quite because the numbers have been too big, and it's been happening for too long. And we talk about a network show. You talk about a network show. Maybe just what do you think? Like honestly, just knowing the media, kind of watching this journey, what do you think the show would revolve around? Uh, oh, uh, everyone. Everyone says the same thing. It's it's not even a big mystery. Everybody would treat it. Uh, everyone everyone's already got the blueprints, and the blueprints read almost like, and and because I, I was talking to a producer in L.A. Um, at a restaurant that Patricia and I went to, um, which was and they you know it's completely unsolicited. This guy just shows up out of the blue. How often does that happen? And and he basically the layout would be very very similar to Ancient Aliens in terms of format. All you do is replace the word aliens with flat Earth. Which is you just have a, a group of people that travel around to different locations and either do experiments on flat earth or look at, you know, old evidence, new evidence. I mean, you know, everything from going to a library and looking at old maps to doing, doing laser stuff, to going to conventions, to going to meetups, to, to talk, you know, to subject matter experts. I mean, the, the thing writes itself. And at the very end, at the very end of the show... Uh, the episode, you say, you know, does this visit to blah, 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 looking across the bay and seeing an object 100 miles, does this prove flat Earth? You know, and it's like you just it's a cliffhanger. And it's like you decide, yeah. you know, we'll come back next week and we'll look at something else. You never, ever answer it. Uh, yeah. You know, you just put you just keep putting the seeds in their head every time. And, and Ancient Aliens was brilliant at that, which and you make sure you have a narrative. I mean, it's the formula is literally there. Uh, sure. And the, everyone, every producer that I talked to kept kept going down those lines, which was it's a reality show that it's not like, you know, one of the MTV flat things. Flat Earth Real World. But yeah, it's not Flat Earth <laughs> Real World where you stick people in a house and give them a bunch of alcohol and let them take swings at each other. It's yeah, it's yeah. you. Put, Although that would be pretty fun. I, I remember when, you know, after the Flat Earth International Conference in Canada, when I took all you guys up to uh, uh, the mountains there, yeah. we stayed in that house. We were all just looking around. We're like eating dinner together, you know, just hanging out in this one oh, big yeah. house. But uh, imagine if there were cameras for the whole weekend and you were to cut that together. It'd be some interesting conversations. Well, and well, here's the thing, though. There's not enough There's not enough drama for the media in that case because the Flat Earth sure. family, as as much as there is drama in the Flat Earth family, sure. there's not... We'd have, to, we'd have to bring in, we'd have to bring in Matt Powerland and Eric... DeBain. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to introduce drama. I, I remember when I was down in New Zealand, I did a, a radio show from my hotel and they, they, took, they took calls... And I don't know if I told you this, they took calls and after it was over, I wish I would have recorded it, uh, you know, because the I try to record the, the the little production notes in between. And she goes, she goes, oh, just so you know, there were a whole bunch of calls in support of, of Flat Earth. And I go, I go, but you didn't take them. She goes, well, no, we didn't take them. She goes, what, what fun would that be? She goes, people calling up. Hey, you're absolutely right. You know, thumbs up. Next caller. Right, really? She goes, that's a boring yeah. conversation. She goes, the only calls we took were people that were against you. And I'm going, oh, I get it. I, you know, that's that's just how the media works. So in this sort of case, they're looking for conflict. And with a show like this, producers have always said, they go, it doesn't matter whether you love it or you hate it as long as you're engaged, as long as you're watching it. That's all we care about. You could hate the show all day long. A perfect example would be, oh, God, I, I hate to bring them up, but Jersey Shore. The American MTV production, you know, that was literally about Jer New Jersey people, you know, in a house fighting each other. It was yeah. like watching a slow motion motorcycle crash. And yet people were compelled to watch it. And it's like, oh, yeah, because they, they love to hate some people. 
and I hate to say it, but you know, even Patricia and I, we joked about it, which was, it's like, oh yeah, people would would there be people that would hate us, you know, in in some cases, sure. and it's like th- that's the same with anything. It's like, oh, I like this character, but I hate this character. That's what they want. Sure. So sure. yeah, for sure. anyway, yeah, that's 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 kind of a standard, that's for sure. Yeah. But yeah, you definitely think that in the next while there'll be some sort of television. Oh yeah, they they the have numbers. to the the numbers. Here, and here's here's why. If anyone has any doubt, I mean, first off, there's been producers literally swimming around forever a second of course the netflix honestly behind the curve documentary did so much good for us because uh, what it showed was is that it's viable if it's trending who cares what the numbers are it's in terms of it's like who loved it or who hated it. if it's trending that's what the producers look at um sure. and then the other thing is every and we see this every freaking week in youtube which is all these massive youtube channels which are still broaching the subject because they because they look at the analytics. The people don't understand. It's like if you have a two million sub account, you are constantly looking at analytics. And it's like, okay, what topics can I kind of coattail on? What can I grab? And the the perfect one I should mention that just happened what not even a week ago would be uh, Niga Haiga. Remember they did that kind of lab Cody funny parody thing on us some months. Yeah. In fact, it might even be like up to a year ago, and all of a sudden they're back in it. They're, you know, they're talking about it again. In fact, they yeah. just watched the documentary and they were commenting on it. And they kept saying during it, they're going, okay, just to let you know, we're not flat earthers. We're just saying there's something about it. All right. Just gonna be clear here. We're not flat earthers. Mm. And it's like, how many times yeah. we heard that before? It's like, okay, that's Rob Skiba yeah. all over again. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that's like uh, Rob Skeeper or even Owen Benjamin, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Owen I, Benjamin, I know, same thing. I'll tell you, there's a lot of... Cur- yeah, there's a lot of... <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not... It's like, okay, I'm maybe, maybe I am. <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay. Well, most of us most of us went through that uh, kind of transition, right? Or we went through that uh, same kind of storyline where we're just like, no, 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 there's no way, you know, there's no way yeah. it could be true. But, well, but when, you, like, you, know, when, like when you have a lot of subs, and, though, I mean, you're really afraid of the backlash. Which is yeah. again, and you can you could plot a graph, and, and it's like if you have ten thousand subs, you're not that scared. You have a hundred thousand subs. Yeah. I mean, look at look at Red Pill, Red Pill philosophy. Yeah. He he just he yeah. was like, no, no, I'm not saying. I mean, they all say the same same thing, which is I'm I'm not saying I'm one of them. I'm just saying I'm thinking. Although although fact, yeah. like, amazing, and I bring this up all the time when people you know bring up the Logan Paul thing. But what sparked a bunch of uh, these truther channels, such as SGT Report. Also, Christopher Green. Uh, and there's another one. Uh, you know, I think even Alexandra. She put in. Um, you saw the Alexandra, you know, video with the girl talking about flat Earth. I'm sure you saw that, Mark. But anyway, yeah. she was talking the connection between Logan Paul. But what I'm saying is, even something like Logan Paul, that was horrendous, still woke up a lot of people going, "Wait a minute, why are they yeah. going so much against this? Right? The, why are they allowing this to happen? You know? So it, it, it's interesting how something so bad that people want to rail on in, in the flat Earth community is actually doing us more. Oh favor. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't don't get me wrong. And I- I've said this several times now, which is the the Logan Paul thing, as as cringy as it was, it was the worst. It was the worst parody thing I've ever seen. Dude, they had a shrine. They had a shrine in my picture. It was ridiculous. Oh yeah, that. I mean, as soon as they saw that, well, and honestly, they gave it away. Their their production value is so terrible. They they gave it away too early. It's like I mean, literally in the first eight minutes, you're going, okay, I, I see what you're doing oh, here. I mean, yeah. you're not you're not even yeah. close to being serious. No cliffhangers at all. No. But the no, media, the friend, ex- the friend uh, yeah, the friend falling over the edge. the edge. Oh, oh yeah, falling over the edge. Jay <laughs> lost somebody over the edge. But but the uh, the media exposure on it was monstrous, and yeah. it you know more people kept getting back into. Every time you think flat Earth is is fading, it's yeah. not. Something sure. happens, and then you know we get this new surge. I mean, now I'm waiting. Uh, now I'm waiting because we're in the off season of basketball. I think, unless the Raptors, I can't. I haven't even followed the series. But uh, like Kyrie Irving is in free agency again, and now he, there's a chance he may go to Los Angeles. There's like a there's some. So how long until an A list? So what? Just I'll get your prediction. Obviously, it's just your opinion. Right. But what would you say until an, a, like a literal true A lister comes forward and does not recant? I mean, no pressure, nothing. Uh, they just come out and they say no. Tw- Twenty twenty. Is what I believe. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Right. I, I don't know for whatever reason I keep I keep I have this weird feeling about 2020 and I don't know if it's just a symbolic thing where it's like oh 2020 vision clear sight realize you know that that yeah. whole thing but I, that if I had to take a bet I I would because this year just seems to be right now it's flat earth on tour 
<laughs> which again oh sure how, sure. how is that, well a th- that there's a bunch of you know there's a bunch of hollywood people out there i mean obviously we can't disclose names but there are they're out there right yeah. so it's just a matter of time for one jumping out and i think a lot more people will get brave and jump out with them but it just takes that one person well yeah i mean and you you know you and i we're not gonna we won't mention you know the the a-lister in question and i'm definitely not if you yeah. guys are thinking i'm gonna put it in my book i'm not uh, but if if he pulls the trigger on, you know, because he he's absolutely interested in this project. If he pulls the sure. trigger on it, well, f- well th- then you know, sure. it, we all of a sudden become uh, it, we go to that next level immediately. If if sure. that happens, but if I'm just I'm in fact I'm just playing the odds. I try to play it safe if I can, which is uh, I you know I'm going to assume I'm going to assume it's somebody else, and then I sure. will call him up and say, what where have you been? <laughs> You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. happened to you, man? Yeah. I mean, because yeah. you know, <laughs> at one point, I mean, seriously, it, let let me put it this way: when I go to L.A. and a meeting is set up without me even knowing about it, I'm not even yeah. I'm not even told about the meeting, and I'm in one. Then what? You know, then we're talking about something that was meant to happen. Uh, it, well, also, and also maybe for our audience as well too. Um, you know, you just recently had uh, Trinity Broadcasting. Oh yeah, um, I'm sorry, I completely forgot about, about those guys. Right. He's development like... because now you got a Christian, you know, network. Uh, the, the, I would say they're the largest in America by far. Yeah. I can't see. Oh it. yeah, it's huge. That. And they come up and they're interested in possibly doing some sort of show. I mean, I just, I'm still trying to rack my brain. Oh, that and that, that was. Works. I, 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 let me let me elaborate on this real quick because that was completely unsolicited. I did I did not know anything about. I mean, of course, I knew who Trinity was, but I you know I, I don't watch their channel on a regular basis. Sure. And but everybody knows who they are. I mean, they're they're yes. a really big player, and they they call me up without any context, and they say we're going to come up, and they treat it no so so nonchalant. The next thing you know, there's a full film crew here, and they shoot a full blown television segment. And, and, you know, and, and afterwards they're, they're feeling myself and the topic out and I'm get, I'm hitting them with everything I got. And, you know, where I'm using a lot of your guys' quotes, um, from one of your conferences, where is, as far as from a Christian standpoint, it's the, the, it's the most powerful tool that's ever been seen. And yeah. they're, and I'm, and they're getting it. In fact, when I was quoting, I, I, I gotta say this, I, you know, it, it, you guys are way better at this than I am. But when I was sitting there in front of what's his face, I can't I, forgive me. I, I forget his name. I, the letter's still lying around. Um, but I was quoting enough chapter and verse, and I was rattling off chapter and <laughs> verse. Uh, their eyes were lighting up <laughs> the size of dinner plates, and <laughs> to the point where they're going. I mean, you could tell. And and I was asking them, and they were absolutely thinking. So they're going to air the segment. You know, they're, they're going to treat it no different than National Geographic. They're going to air it. They're going to see how social media responds. And if they respond favor- favorably, they're thinking about running their own show. And why wouldn't they? I mean, it's if if it can be used to further their cause, then why wouldn't they? And which is interesting because I would imagine, and I'm just throwing it out there, that they're going to get a lot more negativity than positivity when they do throw it out there, right? So it'd be interesting to find out how that all maybe you know goes over. May- for them. Maybe I mean, regardless, if they want to put a show together, it's just saying right now, as you know, there's a lot more. <laughs> Uh, negativity around you know churches and and christian kind of mainstream christianity when it comes to this topic right. i mean we're working through it like sarah you know oh, being, yeah. you know kind of being shown the door at the largest church in canada i mean i've been kicked out of my church you know tw- I, i've been i've been kicked out of two churches me and my family and then you got pastor nate here my co-host you know he got fired for simply going to a conference yeah. that was speaking about flatter so again they're really not for it so it, it seems and- very uh, encouraging if they're wanting to, you know, uh, kind of look into the topic and, more. And I get, and I get that. And I even addressed that in the book. I, I made a little message to the to the pastors of, of these churches, and I said, "Look, I get nice. it. When you when you reach a certain level of congregation, no different than the the people that have subscribers to podcasts or radio shows. Oh, well, I, here's a perfect example. In fact, this this should give you some per- perspective on the pastor side. And that was, and you've, yeah. you you know this one, Robbie, which is the Alex Jones show before Alex, you know, became a, a bad word. Uh, sure. <laughs> when he, his, his group approached me t- two years ago, at least yeah. and, and said, Hey, we're thinking about doing a show and we're covering the flat earth topic. What, you know, how long can we do a show without actually mentioning the words flat earth? And I go, maybe 10 minutes. And then there was this pause and it was like, you know what? Can't take the risk. It's, it's too, you know, wow. they were afraid of the topic and that's the Alex Jones show. It, wow. I mean, now granted, we've come a long ways in two years, 
but at, you know, yeah. uh, church would have the same. They should have called me. I can do a whole hour or two hour interview without mentioning it once. I mean, scientism exposed my documentary. <laughs> Doesn't mention flat Earth at all. But again, it really points one hundred and ten percent. Well, sure. to flat Earth, but it never mentions flat Earth once. Sure, I, but I, I I get it. Look, if you're the largest church in Canada, and I know a lot of churches say they're the largest church in whatever, but if you have a you know a congregation that's seven thousand, ten thousand people, you are really worried. That's big for Canada, trust me. It's not like the mega churches in the U.S. where that's like puny. That's like a normal sized church. Right. In Canada, trust me, that is the largest church. I mean, I've looked it up. It is definitely the largest church in Canada. Wow. Um, but again, it would not be considered massive by U.S. standards. Right. I mean, they're, they're, you know, 50, 60, 70,000, some of those mega churches. Um, but uh, it is it is intriguing. But like, I mean, I've talked to Sarah and I've been talking to Pastor Nate. And we're talking about ways of, of kind of working with the church. Like, we're not, we're not willing just to walk away from this. We definitely want to work on this because, again, it is it is valid it is important and really for christians the bible is important do we take it literal or not especially when it comes to creation i didn't you yeah, know what it, it is a it is a fear factor you know but i also think it's it's an education situation too because you, you know you have the fear of especially you know some churches are more independent i mean the church that i was ministering at you know they had a local leadership but you know the church operated by itself there wasn't any you know higher ups or you know people that we were worried about you know getting a phone call from it was just the local leadership freaked out you know but so you have the fear factor and, and some of these denominations you know even though the pastor may be kind of the big shot in the church in the local church they often you know have to answer to you know higher powers and they're very afraid of of you know getting kicked out or being replaced or you know whatever uh was it chuck loss or pastor lawson you know he first kind of came out uh, very positive and some of his you know clips he's like hey they make some good points and then next thing you know he's like the angry guy in the pulpit you know railing against flat earth yeah, I found out about that just just real quick to interject. And he got yeah. railed on so much by flat earthers that turned them off. Again, we should never oh, judge a community gotcha. by the comments like Mark had brought up. You know, we yeah. should never judge a community by the comments. But unfortunately, when all you're getting is hate mail and stuff, it really turns you off really quick if you're oh, first yeah, starting to you, look you into could a see the problem. anger, right? So you knew yeah. somebody somebody made him upset, you know. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. not not just the fear factor, but it's the educational part of it. I mean, Robbie, when we first uh, started this show. You know, I, I fully shared and divulged and said, hey, you know, I was shocked after 20 something years of, you know, teaching about creation and whatnot. When I realized that, you know, I blew it. I missed the, I missed the boat on that, you know, the true sure. biblical creation. And it took me this long. And so, you know, I think that uh, in the Christian scene relating to flat earth, it's almost like, you know, as, as Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul mentioned in, to the Thessalonians, you know, he basically said, look, you know, uh, don't treat unbelievers harshly because guess what? You used to be someone who didn't have that faith. And I, and I think we have to adopt that same attitude. It's like sure. sometimes we look down at somebody, you know, who's who's religious and, and, oh, they don't believe the true creation. You know, they don't even read Genesis. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, we have to educate. And I think that's going to take patience. And we're going to have to we're going to have to treat the people better than what they think we will treat them like. And if we can do that, we might get their attention just long enough to, to help bring them along, you know, with with some flat earth Bible clues, you know, it's like, hey man. Very yeah. true, very true, yeah. very true. Yeah. No, and, and I think that's the one big reason why, you know, Mark has done so much, you know, in the community. And, you know, I remember listening to him early on and even while, you know, he had every opportunity to, you know, cut someone down or, or attack back because they were attacking yes. him. He never did, you know, so he's, oh, always, classy. he's always been very class. Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, just uh, being in the position that he's in. And really, you know, Mark was accessible. He puts his phone number for goodness sakes. I mean, Absolutely. that is a dream for any media. It's like, oh, wow, we can just call him up. We can just get an interview now. It's like, yeah, I'll do it now. I'll do it. What, three in the morning? Okay, I'll wake up and I'll do the interview. Like, Mark yeah. is so accessible, but I'm, I'm always was a huge uh, fan and someone that wants to support Mark, but even you know, even Patricia, in the sense that they have just spent so yeah. much work and they have devoted, I mean, their life to this. Yeah, right? and, it's, and it's Patricia, a Patricia's listening in tonight to the show. She, she yes. messaged me on Facebook. So, oh hey, man, seriously? <laughs> oh yeah. boy. <laughs> Yeah, that's no, not good. Patricia's listening in, so no, it, 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 it's awesome. Uh, it's great. I mean, just seeing how everything is exploding, uh, it's just been an amazing ride. There's no doubt about it. Maybe you could talk a little bit here 
before we get to the end of the show uh, about the new project that you're working on. Obviously, you've done quite a few clues. I think you you're now on what clue thirteen or is it? Oh, uh, forget. Wow, one. you know what? I should probably look code that of, up. Code of credibility. I think it was a code, code of credibility. I think was it was. The, yeah, that was your your most recent clue. That was so the I'm most sure recent clue, gonna... and then uh, what I started doing after that was, well, other than the con well, the conferences kept me really really busy. Uh, no, 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 your project, your project. Oh, oh, like my project, my projects. Uh, the big yeah. one that I'm doing right now, uh, and I have been, you know, I have been prodded on this, uh, not just by you, but for other... From, oh, from... I know. But I, I was going to make sure every opportunity I saw you in person so I could actually physically prod you. you know? Thank Mark, you. Mark, Thank you. do it. Which was, well, I mean, most people don't know that, I, yeah, I did the Flat Earth Clues video series first, and then it was turned into a book. Basically, it was the transcripts of it. It was the, it was. Do you know what it was for me, though? What? Like, in, in, I think when you did your speech in Canada, and when I heard it, Knowing that you know you you written your speech, just how how you wrote and just how you were able to convey that message and how powerfully it was to be presented, yeah. I just was like, Mark, you've got to write a book. Like the way, and then now even even with our uh, being on tour here with all these conferences, how you're kind of talking how we got here yeah. and how you're able to weave everything together based on this journey for the last four or five years, uh, it was just a you know to me it makes so much well, sense. Thank and you. I think you're do uh, it for uh, job. I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, yeah. In in this case, and and you 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 were one of the first people. And honestly, the first time you brought it up to me months ago, which was, and I thought I was like, oh, I really, because I, you know, I'm, I'm lazy like anybody else. Like, I don't want to write a book uh, because, I, because honestly, with the Flat Earth Clues book, the first, the first book was called Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, literally, it was a producer called me up and they, and they said, hey, how would you like to turn your clues into a book? I go, do I have to do anything? I go, nope, just send us the transcripts. And I go, sold, right on. I didn't even have to do the illustrations. They took of everything. I mean, honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen. And the next thing you know, I get a, a, a book, a box in the mail with copies of the book. And then it was on Amazon already, and which is really, really great because I had a reference point now for other things because now I can actually say, oh, yeah, I'm an author. But... <laughs> but what hap what started happening was, you know, so much has happened, as you know, in, in the Flat Earth community in, in the four years we've been doing this, that I've had several people, including you. And seriously, once the first time you mentioned it to me, yeah, I've been keeping mental notes in my head anyway. It's it's not like sure. uh, no, sure. writer's block doesn't mean anything to me because the stories that this thing writes itself, it's already happened. Sure. It's just history. And I'm just kind of uh, chronicling it. Which is so I it's like, OK, can I write a book about what has happened to us in the last four years? And other people have been already working on this. Um, one of the producers that um, uh, was soliciting us uh, for the true television project back in the uh, beginning of 2016, who was fired. She's working on a book on this. And I'm never I probably shouldn't tell her that I'm writing this. Um, but sure, I, but even your speech, even your speech in Canada at the conference, that should be included, like something along those lines. Because again, it was just again the, a modified story. version of that speech exists, and yeah. so don't don't worry about that. I mean, I can I can write yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah. a a troop inspiring speech pr of fairly course. quickly, of course. but this of one course. this one so this one so the first one was called the first book was called Flat Earth Clues: The Sky's the Limit. This is called Flat Earth Clues: End of the World. Little play on mm. words there, where you know because one of the most the, the, oh, the most obvious questions we get on a regular basis is show us the edge. Are there any pictures of the edge? And it's like, show, is there an end of the world? You get this in almost every interview. What's at the end? Sure. And sure. so it's like, okay. And so I, I just started making notes like, okay, how would this thing flow? Where, where do I start? And I kind of oh. treat it like a long interview where, you know, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll tell you what, just for you guys, I will give you, here's an exclusive. You ready? Nice. Oh, I'm excited. 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 I will give you the chapter names right right off the bat. And uh, sure. so uh, chapter one, look away, which is, you know, you don't want to see this. You know, there's nothing to see here. I'm basically trying <laughs> reverse psychology. I'm trying to you do not want to look at flat earth, which, of course, yes. is never going to work uh, yeah. to how we got here, which is a modified version of several speeches that, you know, I go into the, like the speech I'm giving this year. Uh, but uh, the speech I give in Dallas will probably be a, a slightly different version than that. Um, chapter three is experiments, test, observe, repeat, which goes into the most obvious experiments that other people have done. Everybody from Jaron and Bob to Rob Skiba and D Marble and, and those guys, my favorite, you know, my favorites that are out there. Uh, number four is the questions, which is like a, a Q and a where I'm trying to head people off of the past and answer questions before they even ask them, which is like, okay, here's the most common questions I get. Here are the answers I got for you. Start here. Um, number five is how NASA failed, 
which is just a big teardown of NASA, my, one of my favorite topics, and, and why we pick on NASA and what NASA has done terribly. You know, I treat it basically like a, like a, a failed Hollywood production uh, um, company. Uh, number six is number six is word on the street, uh, which will probably be one of the more more controversial topics because I'm talking about people in the community, um, mm -hmm. people people that have affected my life in certain ways during the journey. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, everybody from um, and these are these are inside you know inside people. So that chapter that chapter six is really for the flat Earth community. So when I talk about sure. Matt and Eric and Patricia and Bob and Jaron and D Marble mm -hmm. and Paul on the plane and you know other people. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're in there, Robbie. So uh, <laughs> number seven is behind the curve, which goes into behind the scenes. Little little things about the movie that you probably didn't know, and my take on it, and what they really Very shot, cool. what they left out, what they included, creative editing, all that stuff. Chapter eight. There's only thirteen chapters, by the way. Um, thirteen, pretty <laughs> scary conspiracy number. Which is interesting because you, I believe, thirteen clues out right now. Which is really well, there you go, thirteen clues. Uh, so number eight is subject matter experts, which goes into uh, all the subject matter experts that came forward from starting in 2015 until now. Uh, and my favorites and what they meant to me. I don't go over all of them, obviously, but I give them the list. And a lot of this is kind of a reference thing where it's like the book. In fact, I encourage people in sure. the book. It's like put the freaking book down and start clicking on links. I don't I don't give them the links. I just, just I go search for this, search for this. You will find these things. It's not secret information that's out there hidden in a vault. You can find all this stuff instantly. Um, so that's subject matter experts. Number eight. Number nine is friends of the family which is all the people that are outside of Flat Earth, hardcore people that have benefited Flat Earth. So everyone from rapper B.O.B. to Kyrie Irving to CBS. I include CBS in there because they did a wonderful job before they caved into peer pressure. Uh, Owen, <laughs> Owen Benjamin is in there as, as a friends of the family because even though he's not a complete diehard, he's not dedicated to Flat Earth, he's definitely helped us. Um, number 10, of course, the flip side of that, enemies of the state which goes into all the people that are outside of flat earth that have caused us grief uh everybody from you know you the the usual suspects uh neil, sure. neil degrasse tyson bill nye the science guy brian cox uh Na you know different 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 organizations including national Geo. elon musk elon musk. oh yeah oh oh my god i i do a thing I, I'm hoping I don't have to cut it back, but I think I spent like three pages on, on Elon Musk. I mean, I literally just, I could not stop writing about him when I was, when I was doing this, like it was just pouring out of me. It's like, I, I realized how much I hate that man. He's just, I, I was like, and I told him, I look, I, I said some pretty unflattering things. I said, look, first off, he should never, ever be allowed on camera to be interviewed about anything ever. Oh, he should just be a silent billionaire somewhere off in the corner. Never, ever talk to the guy. Um, I'm just curious. I'm curious in the next five to ten years who you're going to hate more than Logan Paul. That's what I'm. No, no. Well, Logan's in there. Obviously, Logan is one of the of enemies course, of the yeah, state. Of no of question. I'm just saying we I, and, hate him. No, no. I hate. I hate. Hate I hate Elon more than Logan because Elon can generate oh. headlines. Uh, okay. Just when he opens his mouth, uh, he can literally make up anything he wants, and yes. and people and the media will cover it, which is one of. Oh, we got. I know we're wrapping up here real soon. Um, which is um. Uh, which is why the New York Post ran that gr article that just I just smiled so much, which when they said they said Elon Musk is a total fraud. That was literally the headline for the New York Post in that section. Anyway, uh, number 11 is religion and why flat earth matters to you, uh, mm -hmm. which is good, which covers uh, all my favorite chapter and verse stories uh, w regarding flat earth, you know, stuff I didn't talk about. I mean, yeah, I, I hinted in the end, of course, the clues about the Tower of Babel. But in this, I, I cover other things like um, uh, uh, Satan and Christ on top of the highest peak, the story of Joshua, you know, holding oh, the stars wow, cool. in the sky, the second coming. Oh, it just goes on and on. And so Very cool. I mentioned those. Uh, number 12 is the flat earth problem, which goes into Google and YouTube and the government and why this is a big deal, why science is bracing against it. And I really focus on the National Geographic thing where they came to me during the article and they cut it completely out of the segment where they asked me if Flat Earth potentially could lead the world into the new dark age. 
And I was going, wow. <laughs> it's like, this is a little this is a little heavy considering it's barely lunchtime, but okay, let's go with that. And so yeah. we talked about that. So the Flyer problem, and then of course chapter thirteen, end of the world, which is moving forward. And is flat earth, oh. does it represent something that could uh, you know, where where is it going? Is it potentially destructive? Or is it, you know, it something you've heard me say, is it is it a new golden age? Does it usher in a new golden age or does it usher in the apocalypse? Mm-hmm. And and some heavy, heavy stuff. And it goes into some simulation theory. By the time I get to chapter 13, seriously, everything's going off the rails. And you're, it's like, okay, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening here. So make up your own mind. And then uh, towards the end, I give speeches. I give um, a kind of a, a mini speech to science, you know, to people who are against us. To the agnostics, sure. people that are on the fence about us, and of course to the um, to the flat Earth faithful, and and that's how oh, I nice. uh, kind of ended up. So yeah, it's I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah, that's great. You man. know exactly how excited I am. But, oh cool. Uh, I'm really excited. Cool. I appreciate the exclusive. And oh yeah. Breaking down all the chapters and yeah, it's that's uh, great. amazing. Yeah. For so I'm I'm the, I'm uh, pumped. I, I I really had to get this out anyway because I really want no matter where it goes from this point forward. Uh, I want to. I want people to know. It's like okay, if the water, you know, of course, I I don't believe the water is crested, but if there's a high water mark, I'd like to people people to know what that where where we were when it happened. So uh-huh. sure, it'll, it'll be nice to just have that. Uh, you know, everything like how we got here. Yeah, and, and of course, it, it's probably your perspective. it's probably going to be anticlimactic because we're we're still on tour. We haven't even gone over to uh, <laughs> we haven't even gone over to Europe yet. And hey, it might be a trilogy. It might be a trilogy. Uh, I've actually I've already actually got the if it is a trilogy, I've already got the third book worked out. So don't worry. There nice. You go. There Sweet. you go. So maybe we're going to see like a trilogy. You can have that one come out in 2021 or maybe. something like that. But hey, let's get the first one done. And uh, really excited. Yep. It's been amazing to have you on. Real quick again, just to let everyone know where they can find you, your work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all you have to do is Google Flat Earth Clues. Easy to find uh, or any browser, you know, will, will work. Um, my my channel name is Mark K. Sargent, but you don't have to memorize that. My website is enclosedworld.com. And the behind the the book on Amazon right now is called Flat Earth Clues. The movie, the documentary is called Behind the Curve. And of course, I endorse all sorts of channels. And I got to mention this just real quick because everyone, I, sure. I keep getting this, which is yeah. if you if you're looking for flat Earth models, a 3D model, you know, not not a digital model, uh, definitely check out flatearthmodels.com. Absolutely, Chris. Chris, Chris Pontius, wonderful stuff. Just an incredible artist. I, I've got him yeah. on myself. Yeah, amazing. Can't, can't wait to He's see him in Dallas. Have a big display in Dallas. We're working on a big. Uh, uh, display that he's going to be there uh, with his van and everything. I'm really excited to, to put Sweet. that together. It looks like you, us three, we're going to be at Take on the World here in August yep, in, yep. In, uh, in Ohio, which is exciting. And we're, all three of us are going to be at Dallas, Texas for the Flat Earth International Conference. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome to to be uh, hanging out and, and doing that. I think the uh, community itself, like I said, is just exploding so many different conferences. Like I've lost count this year. Yeah, the, the ones that everywhere. are the ones that are still left real, real fast. So I'll be speaking at the Gather Festival in Stockholm uh, at the same time that the UK conference is happening, and that's September 12th. And in fact, I'm going to wow. be in doing that from September 8th to the 16th. So I'll be in the UK, Stockholm, back in UK, up in Ireland. Um, I'm doing the Mount Shasta conference September. I'll be there. I think the 18th to the 23rd. I do not know if I'm going to make it to Amsterdam yet, uh, but I know the Amsterdam conference is happening and that's going to be really, really cool. I encourage people to check that out. And then of course the Mm. monster of all conferences. Uh, the Dallas International Conference. Uh, in Oh, and it's going to be quite something. I've actually just started talking about uh, new stage designs and uh, everything for Dallas. And Sweet. I'm looking at, obviously, every year I try to improve. Um, and I remember like, it was like yesterday when all of a sudden February 2017, you know, I announced the first ever, you know, Flat Earth International Conference. And it's just unbelievable, even in the conference space, how much this is exploding. So right. it's yeah. encouraging for me seeing that happen. Um, it, it, it's kind of neat, you know, even bringing up behind the curve, because even in that movie, I can always look at that at the end and kind of see, you know, the very first conference there. Right. All the shots right. at the end. And it's just it would be nice, you know, 20 years to look back and just be able to to see that, you know. So and again, I guess I, I could say the same thing with Logan Paul, I guess a lot of the conference is, is shot but it's exciting uh it's amazing um, i'm so happy that uh, you're a huge part of this community well, keep doing the amazing work yeah. that you do um you're appreciated by so many and honestly it's uh it's a real pleasure not just to to know you but also to call you a friend 
uh, each year we get to know each other better and better. And uh, I am going to keep prodding you. Um, you know, for, uh, <laughs> thanks, man. You should do. Thanks. I'm especially not busy enough. Th- Please, yeah, th- get more work thrown my way. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, it seems to me like you just got down to it. And, uh, you know, you were able to, like, whip that thing out pretty quickly. I mean, well, I again, it was it was always there. It was just a question of I did writer. I was always going to write it. It was just a question of when and, and I needed people to bug me. So fine. You can you can yeah. you can actually so really, take the credit for this it, one. You'll do the audio book and there you go. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and you could probably take that audio book and put some visuals to it. You got a whole. Oh, thanks. Oh, really? You're already it. telling me I got to make a video series out of it. That's <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just a bonus. That's only if you feel like you want it. I think the book itself <laughs> is a big present enough. So thanks. I know how like, being an author myself, I know what it's like to write a book. And it's so uh, Pastor Nate actually is coming out with his very first book. And he, I think yep. he's going to be debuting it in uh, Take on the World. Nice. That's the so, plan. Yeah, so that's going to be really exciting. So really thank exciting. you so much, Mark. Thank you so much, Mark. 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 All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Right, thanks, guy. Take care. Take care.